What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Omni-sensei. Welcome to What If Whitebeard Was Sent to Naruto World and Adopted Naruto? Part 2. If you enjoy this type of content, please gently obliterate the like button. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Remember to check out the original story linked in the description. Without further ado, let's get into it. An eerie silence hung in the air as Kakashi clutched his abdomen, struggling to stand up. The mental guilt was far more agonizing than the physical pain. Each question from Whitebeard left Kakashi lost for word. He knew he had acted like a heartless opportunist, and he felt unworthy of Minato's legacy. The way Minato had treated him kindly, but he hadn't returned that favor by looking after Minato's child. Kakashi couldn't meet Whitebeard's gaze. He couldn't tell if it was guilt or reverence that kept him from looking into Whitebeard's eyes. I, Kakashi finally said, I believe you should go to Kanoha Hospital, and it would be good for both you and Naruto. If there's something wrong with your body, we should find a way to treat it. He avoided giving a direct answer to Whitebeard's questions, redirecting the conversation. You're the only family Naruto has, Kakashi added, taking a deep breath. At this moment, he had come to terms with the relationship between Whitebeard and Naruto, and that's why he advised Whitebeard to go to Kanoha Hospital, as he knew that Naruto had no father or mother. Finally, finding a father figure was a precious thing. If this newfound father left him due to health issues, Naruto's situation would be truly pitiable. Kanoha Hospital Kakashi, with one of his Sharingan eyes, realized that both Whitebeard and himself needed medical attention. Whitebeard's powerful poke left Kakashi in excruciating pain. He had difficulty breathing, and he had to take a deep breath even after walking a few steps. Not good. He thought his internal organs might be damaged. With this thought in mind, Kakashi reluctantly turned to glance at Whitebeard behind him, but he couldn't blame him for the excessive force used. This led to the arrival of two extraordinary figures at Kanoha Hospital. The first was the renowned copy ninja, Kakashi Hitaki, and the second was the newly famous giant, Whitebeard. Their presence caused quite a stir at the hospital, even on a quiet night. The number of medical ninjas in the hospital was fewer at night, but they still swarmed around Whitebeard and Kakashi. Excuse me, Giant San. Hello, a bearded, middle-aged medical ninja, appearing quite nervous yet excited, approached. Giant San, are you here for a medical examination? Whitebeard glanced at the structure of Kanoha Hospital and remarked, your hospital's floors are built rather low. Kanoha Hospital's floor height, approximately 4 meters per floor, was already considered high compared to residential buildings. However, for someone of Whitebeard's colossal stature, 4 meters was insufficient. No worries, the older medical ninja reassured him. We can simply move all the medical equipment outside. This is a giant. These medical ninjas were in their teens and twenties, with the older ones being in their fifties or sixties. They had treated various patients in the village, including formidable ninjas and ordinary citizens. But they had never encountered a giant in their lives. To them, Whitebeard was a unique and intriguing medical case. They couldn't wait to examine him, to see how a giant's body structure differed from that of an ordinary person. Kakashi-san, are you here for a checkup too? The medical ninjas, eager to get started, turned their attention to Kakashi, the copy ninja. Kakashi was finding it hard to cope with their odd enthusiasm. Yes, he replied with a hint of resignation, clutching his stomach. I'm here for a checkup, but can you please not stare at me like that? Then Kakashi was escorted into Kanoha Hospital by a few medical ninjas, while the other medical ninjas from the hospital carried numerous medical instruments outside. They were not worried at all about whether their actions would lead to inaccuracies in these highly precise medical instruments or if they might cause damage. Tonight, the hospital's director is not home. Hmm, it feels quite familiar. Whitebeard mumbled as he observed the bustling medical ninjas surrounding him, reminding him of his time aboard the Moby Dick. He believed that his new Whitebeard pirates probably needed highly skilled medical ninjas, or 
Why not just snatch a few from Kanoha Hospital? Whitebeard scrutinized the group of medical ninjas at Kanoha Hospital with an unusual gaze while they, in turn, were conducting a thorough examination of his aging body. It seems like he's just an enlarged version of a normal human. The medical ninjas soon discovered that Whitebeard was not from some exotic race, and his organ and general physical condition was no different from that of an average person. The only exceptional aspect is Whitebeard's remarkable physical strength, as their needles snapped when they attempted to pierce his skin. This level of physical fortitude even surpasses that of a taijutsu ninja. Can a regular human truly attain this level of muscular development? It's truly astonishing. As time passed during their examination of Whitebeard, the expressions on their faces became increasingly bewildered. They huddled together in whispered discussions as if they had encountered a complex medical problem. Giant San, one of the older medical ninjas, with a shocked expression hidden behind his mask, was at a loss for words. He couldn't help but gaze at Whitebeard's imposing figure and then at the freshly printed medical report he held. He nervously cleared his throat. Gururara, what? Why is everyone acting so weird? Am I on my terminally ill or something? Whitebeard remained nonchalant, well aware of his physical condition, during his time aboard the Moby Dick. His sons had arranged countless examinations for him. Terminally ill? Well, perhaps that term is a bit too humble. The medical ninja took a deep breath, clearly astounded, and went on to say, You, how have you managed to live this long? While this statement might seem impolite at first glance, it truly reflected the thoughts of these medical ninjas, who couldn't fathom how Whitebeard, at the age of 72 had accumulated such a multitude of concealed injuries. They continued to scrutinize his body, searching for any abnormalities. Giant San, if the health issues you have were placed on an ordinary person, or even on an elite Kanoha ninja, they would likely be declared dead. The medical ninja continued, we apologize, but with Kanoha's level of medical expertise, we may not be able to provide you with effective treatment. We've never seen a person with so many hidden injuries. Muscles, bones, blood vessels and organs all appear normal on the surface, but under careful examination, not a single one is unscathed. Each one has an issue. Each one of them each one harbors a hidden injuries. They couldn't help but fix their gaze on the scar on Whitebeard's chest, unable to fathom how many battles this man had been through, how many times he had faced the brink of death. How could he accumulate such a host of injuries? the man before them, it is as if he is the very embodiment of the essence of war. Fortunately, my internal organs haven't been damaged, Kakashi said as he swallowed the medicine prescribed by the doctor. After receiving treatment from a medical ninja, his condition improved significantly. He could now walk without holding his stomach, although there was still a lingering discomfort that would take several days to fully recover. As he exited the hospital, Kakashi noticed the medical ninja busy moving the precision medical equipment back inside. Is the examination over? Kakashi muttered. Suddenly, something crossed his mind. Hey, wait a moment, he said, intercepting a medical ninja who was pushing a garbage bin. Kakashi leaned over to take a look inside the bin. Inside, he saw broken needles, some stained with blood. Kakashi remarked, let me handle these. This doesn't comply with hospital regulations. The medical ninja began to refuse but was silenced by Kakashi's following words. Kakashi, with his dull expression, reached for his ninja pouch at his waist. He said, Stop thinking about conducting experiments on people. If that man, Whitebeard, finds out about these actions, you'll have to face his wrath. Lightning release. Raikiri. A blinding flash of electricity lit up the interior of Kanoha Hospital. When the electric light disappeared, all that remained behind Kakashi was charred rubble and some bloodied needles that had been seared into molten metal by the intense heat. All valuable blood samples were obliterated. Hataki Kakashi, the medical ninja in front of him was seething with anger, glaring at Kakashi's receding figure. Damn it. He had intended to deliver these blood samples to Danzo-sama secretly, and this was an unexpected windfall for their organization. But now everything was destroyed. Hey, wait a minute. Kakashi looked up at Whitebeard, finding it hard to believe. The doctor said you don't have much time left? You believe those nonsense? Whitebeard laughed heartily. Gororara, if I were dying, I'd be dead long ago. Indeed. 
Indeed, all the medical ninjas in Kanoha Hospital believed that even if just 1% of the injuries in Whitebeard's body were taken out and placed in an ordinary person, that person would die instantly. But Whitebeard, against all odds, was still alive and well. I'm not like you folks in the ninja world. Whitebeard grinned. I've got at least three more years in me. Kakashi shifted his gaze away, his hands in his pockets as he walked and said, in three years, Naruto will only be eight or nine years old. Perhaps he was jolted awake by the near-death experience caused by the white beard's deadly attack. You see, when he was born, both Minato-sensei and his wife passed away. Well, long story short, he probably doesn't want to lose you as his father. Gururarara, white-haired brat, why are you suddenly concerned about me? White beard squinted, do you want to be my son? One after another, Kakashi couldn't be bothered to argue. He sighed, I'm just doing it for my teacher's child. Kakashi shifted discreetly, positioning himself on Whitebeard's left side. He felt that if he walked on Whitebeard's right, he might accidentally get hit by Whitebeard's large naginata. Given his small body, being hit by it would land him in the hospital. After a moment of thought, he continued, Kanoha Hospital's medical capabilities are already high. If they can't treat you, I suggest you find a better doctor. Our village used to have a highly skilled medical ninja, but due to various events in the village, she became disheartened and left. Her name is Tsunade. Kakashi rarely spoke this much, but today, he felt different about someone like Whitebeard. If you can find her, Kakashi came to a halt when he noticed that Whitebeard had also stopped. Huh? What's wrong? Kakashi inquired. Kakashi suddenly realized and directed his gaze forward. Naruto? On a chilly night on the streets of Kanoha, a giant stands beside his Murakama Jairi, a ninja with his hands in his pockets, looking bewildered, and a teary-eyed Uzumaki Naruto staring at the two before him. Three figures stood frozen in place. Huh, Pops, I woke up and needed to use the restroom. I couldn't find you, so I followed the footprints you left, Naruto explained shakily. At that moment, his voice trembled with emotion. Whitebeard's imposing physique on an unstable surface. In fact, it could easily leave footprints. Pops, is this? Is what this Uncle Ninja said true? Just now, just now, I heard quite a bit of what you were talking about. Naruto couldn't hold back his emotions any longer. He tried to wipe the tears from his cheeks, but no matter how hard he tried, his tears just kept coming. Finally, a teardrop rolled down his chin and fell to the ground. At that moment, Naruto realized that the moonlight had been obscured by a shadow, casting everything into darkness. But when he looked up, he saw his father's imposing silhouette, unable to discern Whitebeard's expression. Recalling the conversation he had faintly overheard earlier when he was running in this direction, Naruto's tears flowed uncontrollably. You foolish son! Without hesitation, Whitebeard delivered a fist of love to Naruto's head. This time, it wasn't a gentle poke with a finger. It was a direct punch that landed on Naruto's head. Bang! Naruto felt a rush of wind pressure over his head, and he let out a yelp before falling flat on the ground. Suddenly the ground beneath them suddenly caved in, causing Naruto to fall. Ouch! The pain from the fall made Naruto cry out. He stared at his father, who had a confident smile on his face all along. It was only now that he could see it clearly. I'm not so sick that I'm on my deathbed, for God's sake. Whitebeard leaned down and lifted Naruto. You foolish son of mine, wipe your snot and tears. As Naruto was held in the air, he finally realized how enormous the pit in the ground was. After wiping away his tears and snot, he gathered the courage to ask weakly, Pops, you didn't answer my question. Whitebeard remained silent for a few seconds and then placed Naruto on his shoulder. He grinned and said, I have lived for 72 years. How many old geezers on the sea can boast such a long life? Naruto clutched Whitebeard's crescent mustache tightly. You're my only family, Pops. I don't want you to leave me, and I don't want to leave you. Without you, I don't want to become Hokage, and I don't want to be recognized by others. Pops, let's leave Kanoha. Naruto clenched his teeth, determined. That uncle said there's a skilled medical ninja named Tsunade. Let's go find her together. Huh? Wait, wait, hold on. This time, Kakashi couldn't stay quiet any longer. His eye widened. Naruto wanted to leave Kanoha? Oh no. It seems that I made Naruto have such an idea.
Kakashi could not help but breathe cold. He seemed to have caused a problem. Kakashi couldn't help but wish he could give himself a big slap on the face. If he hadn't talked too much, Naruto wouldn't have heard him. He had no idea how he was going to explain this to the third Hokage. To think that he had unintentionally said too much and caused Naruto to have the idea of leaving the village. What a joke. This was a serious crisis in Kakashi's career. He decided to speak up and said to Naruto, Naruto, I remember you were supposed to start at the Ninja Academy in the second half of next year, right? If you leave the village, what if you miss your chance to enroll? Kakashi emphasized, to become a Hokage, you must first become a ninja. If you can't become a ninja, you can never become a village's Hokage. Naruto, only five years old, surprisingly replied with unwavering determination, if my pops can regain his health, I'd rather not become Hokage for the rest of my life. This statement left Kakashi stunned. Could the bond between Naruto and Whitebeard be so strong that Naruto would give up his lifelong dream? Kakashi was in shock. It had only been a few days. He also realized that the bond between Naruto and Whitebeard was even stronger than the bond between Naruto and the village or even Naruto and the third Hokage. Almost like a real father, Kakashi even considered that if Minato were to be resurrected and stood before Naruto, their bond wouldn't be as strong as Naruto's bond with Whitebeard. Shaking off this absurd thought, Kakashi turned to Whitebeard and said, Whitebeard, over the past few days, you should have realized how important Naruto is to the village. The village won't allow him to leave. Gururara, this foolish son of mine is concerned about his old man's health. What does your lousy village have to do with it? Oh, Kakashi suddenly realized that Whitebeard was becoming more stubborn. Kakashi had to explain the gravity of the situation. Once you take Naruto out of Konoha, the entire village may consider you an enemy, and your treatment will be on par with rogue ninjas. The third Hokage, Shimura Danzo, Yudatane Koharu, Mitokado Hamura. The high-ranking figures in Kanoha won't just sit idly by. So, you're saying that I will become a wanted criminal in Kanoha? Whitebeard's expression took on a slightly peculiar look. Kakashi nodded and said, Even a wanted criminal in the entire ninja world? Gururara. Whitebeard laughed. Well, that's not bad at all. Is your currency here called Rio? Just put a reward of a few billion Rio, no big deal. Gururara. Whitebeard didn't seem concerned about being wanted by Kanoha. He even suggested a price range. Kakashi. When he tried to explain how serious it was to be wanted by Kanoha, he realized that Whitebeard had already stopped paying attention and was walking towards Naruto's home. Watching the back of the Whitebeard Kakashi felt overwhelmed. I wonder if the third Hokage is eavesdropping, he thought, then decided to hurry back and inform the Hokage. This situation was getting out of hand. The Saratobi clan residence. While Hiruzen Saratobi was the Hokage of Kanoha, he did not actually live in the Hokage building. The Hokage building served as his workplace rather than his residence. He had finished some work early today. He was on time to go home and get ready to rest. However, for some reason, he couldn't shake the feeling of unease. He didn't know if it was due to recent sleepless nights or some other reason. Suddenly Hiruzen's eyes widened and he reflexively sat up. He reached for a shuriken at the side of his pillow, ready to throw a shuriken in the direction of the disturbance he had sensed. But then he heard a familiar voice. Hokage-sama, it's me. Watching Hiruzen's reaction, Kakashi couldn't help but break into a sweat. He also marveled at the strength of the third Hokage. Despite being 61 years old, he hadn't lost much of his power. Kakashi believed that if he had delayed his response by half a second, that Shuriken would already be at his throat. Kakashi, Saratobi Hiruzen fixed his gaze, let out a sigh of relief, and retracted the Shuriken. Weren't you supposed to be watching over Naruto? What brings you here all of a sudden? Hokage-sama, I have both good and bad news for you, Kakashi said, sounding somewhat hesitant. Good news and bad news? Hiruzen's sense of unease was growing stronger. Go on, tell me both. He furrowed his brows. The good news is, Whitebeard acknowledges that he's growing old and won't be able to stay by Naruto's side for long, at most three years. Is that so? Even such a powerful individual can feel the weight of age, huh? Time truly waits for no one. Hiruzen sighed but then Hiruzen said angrily, What kind of good news is that? His suffering, 
How could it be considered good news to me as the Hokage? Whatever you say, Kakashi couldn't help but roll his eyes inwardly before continuing. The bad news is, Naruto is planning to leave the village. Oh, Hiruzen was still somewhat lost in the tiny joy he'd concealed earlier. Well, after all, the child is growing up, huh? In an instant, Hiruzen snapped back to reality. Naruto wants to leave the village? Crack. His chakra surged so violently that even the floor beneath his feet cracked. It was evident that Hiruzen's emotions were in turmoil. Kakashi sighed. Naruto knows about Whitebeard's condition, and he wants to take Whitebeard to seek treatment from Lady Tsunade. Nonsense. Absurd. No way. Hiruzen exclaimed all three words in quick succession. He immediately pulled open his closet and put on his outdoor attire, saying, Naruto is the son of the hero of Konoha, and he's even the Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. How can he, at such a young age, think about leaving the village? Hokage-sama, the bond between Naruto and Whitebeard has become so inseparable, Kakashi said as Hiruzen hurriedly got dressed. As Saratobi Hiruzen quickly dressed, Kakashi added. He said, As long as my father can recover, I'd rather not become the Hokage. What? Hiruzen gritted his teeth. To give up being the Hokage for Whitebeard? He had spent so much time and effort building a bond with Naruto in order to influence him to become the Hokage. Now, for Whitebeard. He had forgotten the Hokage so easily? Hokage-sama, Whitebeard has given Naruto something that others cannot give true parental love, a kind of genuine affection, Kakashi observed keenly. That's why Naruto cares so much about Whitebeard, to the extent that he's willing to sacrifice his dreams and aspirations, is the affection I have given Naruto inferior to what Whitebeard offers. Didn't I care for this child as well, Kakashi? Saratobi Hiruzen said solemnly. Hokage-sama, you naturally care about Naruto more than Whitebeard, Kakashi reassured. After that, Kakashi remained silent. He was afraid that if he said anything more, the third Hokage might suffer a mental breakdown. The ninja world. Eventually, it grows old. In Naruto's home, even though it was early in the morning, five-year-old Naruto was not asleep in his bed. He rummaged through a dusty old suitcase. Bang! The aged suitcase hit the ground, kicking up a cloud of dust that made Naruto cough and splutter. Cough, cough, cough. Quickly, he grabbed a damp towel and wiped away the dust, then began packing his clothes into the suitcase. Mumbling to himself, he said, Grandpa Hokage once said, when you're going on a long journey, you need to pack clothes, toothbrush, and face-washing stuff, as well as bring some money, but Naruto wasn't sure how much to bring. He carelessly stuffed some clothes into the suitcase, then added toothpaste and a toothbrush. Finally, he put it in his cherished little wallet. The wallet looked quite plump, filled with the pocket money Grandpa Hokage gave him for daily expenses, but he never had a chance to spend it. No one is willing to sell him anything. He had tried explaining this to Grandpa Hokage, but nothing had changed. Naruto just assumed that Grandpa Hokage was too busy to deal with it. Pops, I'm ready. Naruto thought he'd have a hard time carrying the suitcase, but to his surprise, he picked it up with only half his strength. Was this the result of the devilish training with his pops? Naruto's heart swelled with joy. Certainly, his pop's rigorous training was highly effective, but, but then, as he thought about his dad's condition, the fleeting joy in Naruto's heart disappeared. His expression turned dejected. Gururara, you slowpoke, why did it take you so long to pack? Although Whitebeard did not have a watch, he was able to estimate the time. It took almost half an hour to pack this little bag, with your slow pace, you still want to be a Hokage? When Naruto proposed leaving Konoha with Whitebeard to find the legendary medical ninja, Tsunade, Whitebeard agreed without hesitation. As a father, Whitebeard couldn't disappoint his son. That was his way of doing things. Foolish son, is this your first time leaving the village? Whitebeard noticed Naruto's somewhat uneasy expression and guessed that this little guy had probably never left Konoha in his life. Naruto silently nodded. Gururara. As a man, you have to go out and see the world. What's the use of staying in a tiny village like Kanoha? Whitebeard laughed heartily. Nestling in a small Kanoha, what kind of man of the sea are you? Naruto mumbled, Pops, there's no sea near Kanoha. Grandpa Hokage said there's only a vast forest nearby. Oh, it hurts so much. 
He received another fist of love from Whitebeard. The pain almost brought tears to Naruto's eyes. Don't argue with your pops, you fool. Whitebeard laughed and said, As punishment, you can carry the luggage yourself. Naruto, an abrupt voice, so unexpected and somewhat untimely, left Naruto momentarily stunned. He turned quickly to see a familiar, slender figure. Grandpa Hohokage? Naruto was very surprised and somewhat delighted. Since he and his pops were planning to leave the village temporarily, he hadn't had a chance to bid farewell to Grandpa Hokage. He didn't expect Grandpa Hokage to show up directly. Naruto waved and greeted him. Grandpa Hokage, Pops and I are leaving Konoha for a while. As long as we find that. Uh, that medical ninja. Halfway through the conversation, he forgot what Tsunade's name was. Feeling a bit embarrassed, Naruto scratched his head and said, well, we just need to find that medical ninja and get him to cure Pop's illness, then we can come back. By the way, Grandpa Hokage, why do you look so strange? Naruto suddenly noticed that the expression on the Hokage's face was really strange. There was no longer that peaceful demeanor on his face. There was no warm smile either. Instead, a kind of gloomy expression? Naruto, who had never attended school and had a limited vocabulary, was unsure how to describe Grandpa Hokage's current expression. He had a vague feeling that Grandpa Hokage's mood might not be particularly pleasant. As stupid as he was, Naruto's guess was surprisingly accurate. Saratobi Hiruzen was indeed in a very unpleasant mood. In fact, this was the worst he had felt since the end of the Ninja World War, with no comparison. Over two years ago, when a member of the branch family of the Hyuga clan was reluctantly sacrificed, it didn't even come close to causing as much distress to Saratobi Hiruzen as he is experiencing now. Naruto was incredibly special, carrying the bloodlines of both Minato and the Uzumaki clan. On top of that, he was a Jinchuriki of the Nine Tails. Such a child was more important than the entire Hyuga clan. And yet, this child was about to leave Konoha to follow his so-called dad in search of Tsunade? Isn't that ridiculous? How does Saratobi Hiruzen remain calm? He is anxious Naruto. Hiruzen tried to maintain his composure, and even forcing a smile was proving difficult. You're still very young, and you're not at the stage where you should leave Konoha. The world outside the village is extremely dangerous, with many rogue ninjas and enemies from other villages. Leaving the village could lead you to these bad people. Grandpa Hokage, don't worry. Pops is with me. Naruto reassured with great confidence. You might not know, but my pops is incredibly, incredibly strong, Saratobi Hiruzen. All kinds of information about Whitebeard had been flooding his office desk like snowflakes these days. How could he not know how strong Whitebeard was? But Whitebeard was an outsider. No, even if Whitebeard were from Konoha, there was no way he would allow Whitebeard to take the five-year-old Naruto out of the village. Naruto, you can't leave the village. Hiruzen spoke to Naruto in a tone he had never used before. Are you not going to listen to Hokage's words? Naruto was taken aback. But, Gururarara, Whitebeard grinned. Foolish son, go wait at the village gate for now. Let your old man here have a talk with your former irresponsible guardian. F.O. Former guardian? Saratobi Hiruzen's eyes twitched. Pops, foolish son, if I tell you to go, you go. Whitebeard threatened seemingly preparing to give young Naruto a love tap with his finger. Startled, Naruto quickly shrunk his head, not wanting to receive a beating. He grabbed his luggage and hurried in the direction of the village gate. However, he couldn't help but turn around and shout, Pops, I'll be waiting for you at the main gate. Naruto, Saratobi Hiruzen, feeling wants to follow, but he finds Whitebeard calmly blocking his way with his Murakuma Jairi. Hiruzen's expression could no longer conceal his expression. It became extremely ugly. Whitebeard, you've crossed the line. There's nothing for us to talk. Let me be clear. Naruto cannot leave the village. Gururarara. Whitebeard laughed. Have you been a Hokage for so long that you've gone senile? When a pirate said let's talk, did you truly think we'd just talk? What does he mean? Could it be that? Suddenly, Saratobi Hiruzen realized, albeit too late. Whitebeard had already swung his Murakumajiri in the air and lunged at him with a swift blow. 
The fierce and menacing roar of the Murakuma Jairi caused a sudden change in Saratobi Hiruzen's expression. Gururara, I'm Whitebeard. This is how pirates talk. The roaring Najinato was even larger than Hiruzen's body. A strong sense of danger made this seasoned Hokage swiftly leap backward, avoiding the deadly edge of the Najinata. However, the wind created by Whitebeard's swing sent ripples across Hiruzen's face, even as he landed on the ground. His teeth, showing signs of poor health from smoking, were exposed as he battled strong winds. Hiruzen was taken aback. He quickly formed hand seals, a cloud of dust enveloping him. Earth release. Earth wall. A wall of earth suddenly surged up, blocking the fierce winds that had been pushing him backward. Hiruzen then jumped atop the high earth wall, which was over 10 meters in height. Since Whitebeard had already attacked, Hiruzen, the leader of Kanoha village, couldn't afford to stand idly by. Earth release. Earth flow river. Hiruzen once again performed hand seals, causing his chakra to surge. His robes fluttered as he directed a powerful flow of chakra. The ground beneath Whitebeard's feet transformed into a muddy swamp, causing everything below his knees to sink in. The muddy swamp rapidly flowed backward, pushing the massive and burly white beard away. The distance is getting farther. Hiruzen couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. He had already gathered information indicating white beard's formidable close combat abilities. Engaging in close quarters combat with such a man would leave him at a disadvantage. Gururara, are you trying to give me a mud bath? White beard planted his Najinata, conqueror, firmly into the ground. He managed to stop himself from being pushed backward. Don't get too cocky. This is Kanoha Village, and I'm the Hokage. This is my home ground. Saratobi Hiruzen's eyes flashed with haze. Fire release. Fire dragon flame bullet. Hiruzen inhaled deeply, and his abdomen and chest swelled as he gathered chakra. A scorching stream of flames erupted from his mouth, forming a massive fire dragon that rushed toward Whitebeard. Hiruzen held nothing back, as there were no longer any residents on this street. Whitebeard had wreaked havoc on numerous houses while battling the Root Ninja that day, and repairs were still ongoing. The raging flames enveloped the entire street, casting a brilliant light on Whitebeard's face. Gururara, why is it that every ninja can breathe fire? Whitebeard suspects that his foolish son, Ace, may have eaten the flame flame fruit in vain. He could also control flame by learning ninjutsu. Whitebeard grinned and without hesitation, slashed horizontally his blade created a gap in the flames. However, the concealed shuriken within the flames revealed themselves. Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu Saratobi Hiruzen quickly changed his hand seals, turning five shuriken into ten, twenty, forty, and eventually thousands of shuriken. Whitebeard broke free from the Earth Flow River, Jutsu's restraint, and stepped forward, directly into the path of the thousands of shuriken. Clang! Clang! Countless shuriken struck Whitebeard's massively muscular frame, creating bursts of dazzling sparks but failing to penetrate his defense. Unbreakable, Hokage Saratobi didn't appear surprised by this. He had gathered sufficient information about Whitebeard, knowing well that his physical defense surpassed that of most taijutsu specialists. Therefore, my shuriken aren't ordinary shuriken, Saratobi Hiruzen finally mustered a smile. Each one is enveloped in exploding tags, Boom, boom, boom. Intense explosions enveloped Whitebeard's body, and the shockwaves spread rapidly in all directions. The partially repaired buildings on the street were once again subjected to severe damage after this round of explosions. Cement and debris were sent flying. The scene was nothing short of spectacular. Such movement this commotion had already caught the attention of numerous Kanoha shinobi. The Uchiha police force, Umbu, Root, Hyuga clan, Saratobi clan, and the Yamanaka clan, Shinobi from various factions were alerted. While they weren't sure what had happened, seeing the scene would tell them everything. If enemy Shinobi were causing trouble within the Kanoha village, they needed to react swiftly. Even someone with a tremendously resilient physique can be severely injured. Saratobi Hiruzen confidently stated, while a large body may bring great physical strength, it can also make one a massive and conspicuous target. He no longer focused on the repeatedly bombarded Whitebeard, but instead was eager to chase after Naruto. Gururara, where are you going? What? The familiar hearty laughter caused Hiruzen's pupils to contract. 
He looked incredulously towards Whitebeard's position. As the lingering dust dissipated, what he saw was an unscathed Whitebeard. Only his skin and the large cloak were covered in a fair amount of dust. How is this possible? Is he made of iron? Although I'm a remnant of the old era, I'm not trash that can be defeated by a few exploding pieces of paper. Whitebeard laughed uproariously, his robust body suddenly leaping high. Armament hockey wrapped around the Miracomagiri, under the moonlight, the massive blade reflected an unusual black luster. His body also plummeted at this moment. The large blade slashed down fiercely. This ferocious slash made Saratobi Hiruzen feel a death omen. Ninja art. Summoning Jutsu. Saratobi Hiruzen decisively bit his own finger, fiercely slapped it on the earth wall below, and the spiritual array spread on the earth wall. As he gritted his teeth and shouted Enma, a tall figure appeared instantly. Saratobi, why did you suddenly, hmm? Enma, who had just been summoned, suddenly noticed movement above. His pupils also contracted immediately. Transform. Without needing Saratobi's command, Enma, who sensed a huge crisis, changed into Adamantin staff. Adamantin prison wall. As the monkey demon transformed into Adamantin staff, it divided itself into multiple individual staffs creating an iron prison that imprisoned Hiruzen Saratobi within it. It was also at this moment that Whitebeard Slash had already fallen down, and Mirakumajari in his hand slashed on the adamantin prison wall clang. The deafening clash almost ruptured the eardrums of Saratobi Hiruzen. The tremendous shockwaves turned the surrounding terrain into rubble, and the already unstable houses in the vicinity crumbled under the immense force. The entire street suffered unprecedented devastation, flattened to the ground. The terrifying force even spread outward. The neighboring residents were terrified. The shockwaves, bursting through the gaps in the adamantin prison wall, made Hiruzen inside feel as though a mountain was pressing down on his shoulders, causing his knees to bend. Saratobi, what kind of monster have you provoked? Enma's voice resonated. If I had reacted half a second slower, you'd be meeting your teacher in the afterlife. Now is not the time for explanations. Saratobi Hiruzen gritted his teeth, struggling to stay on his feet. The crushing pressure on his shoulders felt like carrying a mountain, and cold sweat poured from his body. His aging muscles screamed in protest. Enma! Hiruzen shouted, This guy is trying to take the Jinchuriki out of Kanoha. As the Hokage, I must stop him. Gurarara! Hiding inside your turtle shell? Whitebeard grinned as he continued to slash at that adamantin prison wall seemingly impressed by its resilience. But the smile never left Whitebeard's face. As he retracted his Murakumajiri, Hiruzen immediately seized the opportunity. Enma transformed back into a staff, and Hiruzen used body flicker technique to retreat several dozen meters. Hiruzen was panting heavily. He believed that even when facing another Kage from a different village, he wouldn't be exhausted this quickly. But he was unusually tired now. Whitebeard's incredible power, exceeded his expectations. There were intelligence reports on Whitebeard in Kanoha village, but they still underestimated him. This man was ridiculously strong. Hiruzen was starting to regret coming here so quickly and leaving Kakashi behind. If he had Kakashi's assistance, the situation might have been different. Saratobi Hiruzen had to admit it to himself he was getting old. With his current strength, along with Enma, he wouldn't be able to hold Whitebeard back. It would take at least ten high-level jonin to defeat him. The umbu should be on their way Hiruzen made a quick tactical decision. Enma, we don't need to engage him head-on. We just need to stall him for five minutes. Understood. Enma, the staff, spoke with its mouth. Earth release. Earth dragon bullets. Hiruzen slammed Enma into the ground, and his hands moved at blinding speed to form seals. A dragon's head of earth emerged in front of him. The dragon opened its mouth, and unleashed a barrage of earth bullets, resembling fired artillery shells in speed. Fire release. Fire dragon bullets. Hiruzen quickly changed his jutsu. He unleashed a fierce burst of flames that wrapped around the earth dragon bullets, creating a combined jutsu earth dragon flame stream. Seems like you ninja have quite a circus of tricks up your sleeves. Whitebeard mocked as he lifted and swung his blade, adorned with armament hockey, straight down to shatter the combined jutsu. You underestimated me, big guy. 
Amidst the explosion of fire and earth caused by Whitebeard's attack, the triumphant voice of the Enma sounded abruptly. He saw, the adamantine Saf, which was leaning next to Haruzan Saratobi, vanished without a trace. It turns out that the impressive combination ninjutsu was nothing more than an illusion. Two monkey-like hands, emerging from the concealed staff, reached out to grasp Whitebeard's wrists, attempting to restrain his movements. Got you? Enma grabbed Whitebeard's hands tightly, successfully controlling Whitebeard's movement. Saratobi, now's your chance. Excellent work, Enma. Saratobi Hiruzen was elated. However, their joy was short-lived, as Whitebeard's voice sent a chill down their spines. Gurarara, what kind of illusion made you little monkeys think you could control me? What? Enma exclaimed. It suddenly realized that Whitebeard's two palms were enveloped in a blinding white light, and even Enma's hands were caught in it. What is this? On the other side, Hiruzen's expression turned grim as he recalled something. He shouted, Enma, be careful! But it was too late. Buzz! The terrifying power of tremors caused the veins on Enma's palm to bulge, and an expression of extreme shock appeared on the face of the monkey manifested on the adamantine staff. The power of Quake? It realized something was terribly wrong. What kind of strange ninjutsu is this? Involuntarily, Enma tried to release Whitebeard's hands, but its actions were too slow. The excruciating sensation of its hand being torn apart filled it with dread, and cold sweat poured down its face. The Vajra indestructible body allowed Enma's hands to avoid being instantly shattered, but the bone-piercing pain from the vibration was unbearable for Enma. His palms were terrifyingly vibrated, causing a large number of ghastly cracks to burst out on his skin, which shocked Enma immensely. The Vajra indestructible body was actually shattered. He was so frightened that he was forced to let go hastily. Gurerarara. Whitebeard held the Murakumajiri in his left hand, and his right hand had already clenched into a fist. The lingering vibrating white light formed a halo that completely enveloped his right fist. That white light seemed to possess the power to destroy the heavens and the earth. You think you can hold me back with this level of skill? I am Whitebeard. Whitebeard's right arm muscles tensed up, and the ferocious smile on his face made people feel as if they were in the midst of a war. Just then, under the furious gaze of Saratobi and Enma, he punched the air, cracked the air, shattered. In the dark night, the visible force of vibration shattered the air, and countless white cracks crazily spread forward. Almost in an instant, it had already approached Saratobi Hiruzen. Enma was hit head-on, and the crazy vibration of everything in heaven and earth made it feel as if the scene before its eyes was spinning around, and the whole world in its sight was turning upside down. But Enma's special physique allowed it to bear it all. However, that body-tearing pain still made it scream out loud. Most of its body hair had been shaken off, its skin began to crack, and blood seeped out from the cracked skin. Even with the Vajra body it was still like this, and those without the Vajra body. Not good. Enduring the severe pain, Enma glared at Saratobi. Saratobi, dodge quickly! Bang! Saratobi's body suddenly exploded, but what splashed out was not flesh and blood, but a piece of mud. This was an earth clone. Saratobi Hiruzen appeared a hundred meters away in a blink of an eye. His face full of lingering fear. Mm. Before he could even catch his breath, the sound of the atmosphere shattering was like a death knell ringing out loud. His face was trembling. The range, how can it be so large? Earth release. Super hardening technique. With a strong will to survive, Saratobi formed several seals at an unprecedented speed. Buzz. Poof. Saratobi coughed up a mouthful of old blood. His clothes shattered in the blink of an eye. His body was like being hit by endless blows, and the sound of broken bones in his body was like firecrackers being lit. The look in his eyes quickly became dazed and lost. Blood was overflowing from all seven orifices, uncontrollably rolling his eyes. His conscious mind crashed on the spot, like being unplugged. The intense vibration force was still spreading towards the distance, until it reached the Hokage Rock, directly hitting one of the huge sculptures. It was Saratobi Hiruzen's Hokage Rock portrait that was hit by the vibration force. It shattered. Rocks scattered in all directions. Hey hey hey! The joke is too big, right? Kakashi, who was chasing in the direction where Saratobi left, 
watched with wide eyes as a large number of white cracks spread in the sky above his head, like a huge white dragon rampaging in the sky of Kanoha. It hit the distant Hokage rock. Feeling the earthquake coming from the ground, Kakashi watched as the nearby Kanoha residents ran out of their homes screaming in horror one by one. He looked down at the ground again, faintly seeing cracks appearing. Cold sweat was pouring down Kakashi's forehead, and his throat was somewhat dry as the Hokage should still be alive, right? This is bad. Sure sway, the Hokage's stone face has shattered. A group of people from the Uchiha clan rushed towards the direction of the noise. This included Uchiha Itachi and Uchiha Shursue. As Itachi sprinted forward, he glanced at the Hokage rock. His tone was forcibly calm, but his heart was in turmoil. Something big has happened. Uchiha Shursue took a deep breath, although he didn't know exactly what had happened. But such a big commotion at night, and it even affected the third Hokage's stone face. At first glance, it's not a small matter. Looking at the commotion, it's very likely that two powerful ninjas are fighting, or even, it's very likely that they are two ninjas comparable to a kage. Achiha Shursue's tone was heavy. Itachi, be careful later, there may be strong enemies from other villages. Understood. Achiha Itachi nodded. This group of Achihas had rushed over from the Achiha clan's residence. They wanted to run to the scene of the incident, but it would still take two or three minutes. Shikaku, do you know who it is? The fat and sturdy Akimichi Choza was also rushing in that direction, and there were two people following him. One was Nara Shikaku, and the other was Yamanaka Inoichi. This is the current generation of Inoshikacho in Kanoha Village. When the new generation of Inoshikacho had not yet grown up, these three were synonymous with Inoshikacho. Their fame once echoed throughout Kanoha. Even in the entire ninja world, they are quite famous. Nara Shikaku said solemnly, over there is where Minato's child live. It should be Uzumaki Naruto who is in trouble. This may involve Whitebeard, who has been making waves recently, and the Hokage has always been paying attention to Uzumaki Naruto. The head of the Yamanaka clan, Yamanaka Inoichi, couldn't help but frown Shikaku, are you suggesting that the two ninjas fighting there are the Hokage and Whitebeard? I didn't say that, but the possibility is quite high. Nara Shikaku said, there's an 80 to 90% chance. That's not much different from 100%. Yamanaka Inoichi had great faith in his old friend, as the heads of the three great ninja clans of Kanoha. Naturally, they had heard of Whitebeard. Akimichi Choza looked at the Hokage Rock. The Hokage Rock has been shattered from a distance. The Hokage couldn't have lost, could he? Nara Shikaku and Yamanaka Inoichi remained silent. No one picked up the conversation. At the root base, Lord Danzo, our people should be arriving soon. A member of the department reported to Danzo, they will follow your orders, Lord Danzo, and will not expose their tracks. Hmm. Danzo responded casually with a troubled mood. Ever since his power was restricted by Saratobi, Koharu, and Hamura, his mood had not been very good. Although his root had always been hidden in the dark, there were times when he could do things openly. It wasn't necessary to be so secretive, but ever since that damn monkey restricted Root's authority, he had to be very careful when commanding Root, lest he be discovered by that monkey. Lord Danzo, our people also discovered that the fight over there has affected the Hokage Rock. The Root Ninja continued. The third Hokage's Hokage Rock has been shattered. Oh, Danzo felt like laughing out loud. Good riddance. If it wasn't just the Hokage Rock that was shattered, but also that guy Saratobi, that would be even better, all sides of Kanoha village are rushing towards there. As time slowly passes, the first to arrive was Kakashi, who had been thrown behind by Saratobi. His figure appeared on a street full of devastation. The forehead protector that covered his Sharingan had already been removed by him. The expression under the mask was exceptionally solemn. Kakashi looked at the unrecognizable street and murmured to himself, how many ninjutsu must have been unleashed here to cause such a bombardment? Soon, he noticed the only house that had not been severely damaged. It was actually the house where Naruto lived. The other houses had become ruins. Hey, that white-haired ninja. A sudden voice made Kakashi quickly lock his gaze on that side. He saw a giant monkey, squatting motionless in the distance. Enma? Kakashi recognized Enma at a glance. As the personal summon of the third Hokage, 
He was also well known in the ninja world. Wait a minute. Why is there only Enma? Where is the third Hokage? And how come Enma, who is rumored to have a Vajra indestructible body, is covered in blood? When Kakashi quickly walked over, he stood still on the spot, his eyes widened a bit, and his tone was even more incredulous. The, er, the Hokage? He's unconscious. Enma slowly got up, his expression very complicated. Quickly contact your medical ninjas and send him to the hospital. In Kakashi's line of sight, Saratobi, who was the Hokage of Kanoha, was lying motionless on the ground. This Hokage was covered in blood all over his body, his limbs were somewhat twisted, and he seemed to have broken bones. Enma, what about the Hokage's rock? It was shattered, Enma replied. So you guys are? Before Kakashi could finish his sentence, Enma directly responded. We lost, Enma said. He took a deep breath, and the strong sense of defeat was obvious. Neither Saratobi nor I were a match for that guy. That guy is as strong as a tailed beast. Kakashi. In other words, the third Hokage rushed to Naruto's place at a fast pace, clashed with Whitebeard, and then both sides started fighting. In the end, the, the third Hokage couldn't beat him. He summoned the Monkey King Enma. Yet, in the end, he still couldn't win. On the surface, Enma appeared unharmed, but the sight of the unconscious third Hokage suggested a dire situation. Shouldn't they first cover the Hokage's body, then swiftly transport him to the Kanoha Hospital? Otherwise, it might tarnish his image. Hataki Kakashi. Enma. The next moment, members of the Uchiha clan arrive. Encountering Hataki Kakashi here didn't surprise them, but meeting the third Hokage's summoning beast left them quite taken aback. Then they noticed a person lying on the ground. Upon closer inspection, their Sharingan eyes nearly popped out of their socket. Is that the Hokage? The Inoshikacho trio, Hyuga clan, Saratobi clan, Umbu, and even the root members had all arrived one after another. They found that they hadn't encountered any so-called formidable enemies. The enemy village ninja they had imagined did not appear. Instead, they found an unconscious Hokage. Everyone was momentarily silent. Meanwhile, at the gates of Kanoha, what's going on over there? At this moment, the ninjas guarding the gates of Kanoha were not the future gatekeepers, but two elite chunin from the village. They were gazing into the distance when they noticed a small figure approaching. Hey, 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 little brat. One of them shouted, don't come near here at this late hour. We can't let you little brats sneak out of the village in the middle of the night. If something happens, we'll be held responsible. Naruto, dragging his suitcase and panting heavily, came to a halt. He was also unsure about what was happening behind him. Since his father had urgently asked him to come over, it must be important. He just didn't know how his father's conversation with the Hokage had gone. I, facing the two gatekeeping chunin of Kanoha, just as Naruto was about to explain, suddenly, a large figure appeared in the darkness. Whitebeard's footsteps were not quiet. Naruto quickly turned around to look behind him, his face filled with surprise and excitement. Pops, Gura Arara, Whitebeard, carrying his Murakuma Jairi, grinned at the two stunned Chunin and said, I want to take my foolish son out of the village. What? You two little brats want to stop us? The terrifying oppression emanating from the world's strongest man caused two Kanoha's Chunin to break out in cold sweat, as if they were facing the most horrifying entity in the ninja world. Even though Whitebeard did not use his conqueror's hockey, Yet, the aura of a king who has crawled out of a mountain of corpses and a sea of blood, even a slight leakage, is enough to make one's heart tremble with fear. It's not something two Chunin can withstand. The tense atmosphere made their hands sweat. According to the theoretical knowledge they learned in the ninja school, they should quickly take out Kunai and hold a shuriken in their hands. In this way, they can respond to crisis situations at any time. But under these circumstances, they have even forgotten the theoretical knowledge they once knew by heart, and can only keep retreating, until, their backs are pressed against the closed door of the Kanoha village. There is no more room for retreat. The, the Kanoha village has rules. One of the young Chunin, who looks no more than twenty years old, his voice trembling, ordinary people at night are not allowed to, Gururarara, white beard interrupted. So-called rules are meant to be broken, would a pirate care about rules? Impossible. 
Under the stunned gaze of two Kanoha's Chunin, Whitebeard wielded his Murakumajiri and slashed towards the Kanoha village gate with one stroke. The Kanoha village gate that could withstand several ninjutsu instantly became as soft as tofu. A straight gap appeared on the gate. After a few shakes, the gate directly collapsed. This way of opening the door is too violent. Foolish son. Whitebeard turned his head and said to Naruto, who was also a little stunned behind him, What are you dazing at? Oh, coming pops. For some reason, Naruto had no objection to Whitebeard's violent method. On the contrary, he feels a bit excited. The large and small figures, under the horrified gaze of two Kanoha's Chunin, step by step away from the Kanoha village. They dare not stop them. Pops, when your body is healed, we will return to the Kanoha village. Naruto, who is truly leaving the village for the first time, said enthusiastically, Pops, when do you think we can come back? Gururarara. At most one year. Whitebeard grinned and laughed. In one year, you little brat will have to go to school. As your pops, I must protect my foolish son's dream. Don't say stupid things like giving up dreams for me anymore. Naruto asked with doubt and worry. But, pops, can we find that medical ninja called Tsunade within a year? Of course. Definitely. Absolutely. Whitebeard laughed confidently. You stupid son, as long as you know that when you go to school in a year, don't become the weakest of the school. Okay, pops, I will definitely be the strongest. Naruto is full of energy. The next day noon. Cough, cough. Sarutobi Hiruzen's consciousness was blurred and he kept coughing. As the cough became more intense, his consciousness gradually became clear until he tried hard to open his tired eyelids, he found that what he saw was a white ceiling and smelled the smell of disinfectant. Hokage-sama, are you awake? A familiar voice came from the side. Saratobi Hiruzen just wanted to turn his head to look. As a result, the severe soreness in his neck muscles made his face twitch. Helplessly, he could only maintain this posture of staring at the ceiling. Saratobi Hiruzen's face was complicated. He has realized where he is now. He can even hear who the familiar voice is. Kakashi, how long have I been asleep? Sarutobi Hiruzen's voice was slightly hoarse, after all. He hadn't drunk a drop of water for a long time. One night and one morning. Kakashi has been staying here all the time. He responded. Almost twelve hours. Twelve hours. How embarrassing. Sarutobi Hiruzen couldn't help but laugh at himself. He believed that if he were ten years younger, he would definitely be able to fight Whitebeard evenly. With the help of Enma, maybe he could even take down the opponent. But as an old man himself, whether it's reaction speed or chakra volume or physical function, they all start to decline severely. Not as good as before. Naruto? Sarutobi Hiruzen suddenly thought of Naruto and his tone became anxious. Gone. Kakashi responded. According to the two Chunin guarding the main gate, Whitebeard forcibly took Naruto away from the Kanoha village. The main gate of the Kanoha village was chopped down by him. Jinchuriki ran away, gone. Sarutobi Hiruzen almost spewed out a mouthful of old blood. When the first Hokage divided the tailed beasts among various villages and only left nine tails for Kanoha village. From then on, nine tails was equivalent to Kanoha village's private property. At the same time, it is also an extraordinary terrifying force for Kanoha Village. Once Naruto can establish a bond with Nine Tails in the future and skillfully use Nine Tails' power, then for their Kanoha Village, there will be an extra Kage level powerhouse, even stronger than ordinary Kage. However, Naruto ran away, which means Nine Tails is gone. This means that such a powerhouse is gone. It means that Kanoha Village's future has been cut off. You, None of you went to chase Naruto back? Sarutobi Hiruzen struggled to twist his neck. Even if he was lying on a hospital bed, his eyes were still very sharp. Kakashi's dead fish eyes didn't change much in expression. His answer was very versatile. Without Hokage-sama's instructions, I'm afraid that acting on my own will cause trouble. Sarutobi Hiruzen almost burst his lungs with anger. That is to say, during this period of time when I was in a coma, Kakashi didn't take any measures at all and watched Naruto run away with his own eyes? Kakashi, have you always held a grudge against me? Sarutobi Hiruzen took a deep breath. Because of the Sakumo incident? Hokage-sama, you're overthinking? Kakashi calmly replied. 
Then go after them. Saratobi Haruzan's emotions were slightly agitated, and he felt his muscles aching all over. This is an order from me, the Hokage. Kakashi's mouth twitched. You think too highly of me, don't you? Yes, Hokage-sama. In the Uchiha clan compound, brother, you're back. Sasuke quickly threw away the wooden kunai in his hand and looked at Itachi with a surprised face. Brother, why did you come back so early today? Uchiha Itachi quickly hid his complex expression. Too many things happened last night that he hasn't digested yet. There was no work today. Looking at his younger brother, Itachi smiled gently so I came back early. There was no other way. The Hokage was hospitalized, and there were at least 20 or 30 Umbu members watching the entire Kanoha village hospital, so he didn't really need to guard the door. Sasuke, have you been practicing throwing techniques all day today? Looking at the wooden kanai all over the ground, and then looking at the target in the distance. He also noticed that his younger brother was sweating profusely. Those two slightly tender little palms were cut by the wooden spikes of the kanai, leaving many gaps. Uchiha Itachi felt a pang of heartache. Yes, Sasuke was full of energy. As the son of the Uchiha clan leader, I absolutely cannot be surpassed by Uzumaki Naruto. The next time I see him, I must be stronger than him. Sasuke waved the wooden kunai and treated the air as Naruto. I will defeat him and then tell him that he is like a girl. It seemed that he could imagine that scene. Sasuke felt that he was capable again. He chuckled happily. Yes, I believe in you, Sasuke. Itachi gently poked Sasuke's head with his index and middle fingers. In fact, he also breathed a sigh of relief. At least. Those very aggressive clansmen in the Uchiha clan couldn't find trouble with Whitebeard. This might be considered a good thing? That guy called Whitebeard, defeated the third Hokage, and took the Jinchuriki away from the Kanoha village? Those Uchiha, who are very aggressive in the Uchiha clan and advocate revenge for Gon, Fumi, and Chue. Upon learning this news, they were all stunned. They have gathered more than 30 Uchiha clan ninjas, most of whom are elite ninjas from the Uchiha police force, and the weakest are all Kanoha Chunin level. Although the Uchiha clan is full of mental illnesses, but they are not fools. Uchiha Gon, Uchiha Fumi, and Uchiha Chue, the three clansmen with Sharingan, were all easily defeated by that white beard. They naturally can't just gather a few people to find trouble, which is no different from committing suicide and giving away a few pairs of Sharingan for free. But, when they felt that everything was ready and formulated a detailed combat plan, they were determined to take down Whitebeard's head. This group of Uchihas suddenly found out. They were hasty. That guy. A Chunin from the Uchiha police force swallowed a mouthful of saliva, and cold sweat overflowed from his forehead. He can actually defeat the third Hokage, although they are very hostile to the Kanoha village's higher-ups, including Hokage. But they never thought that the third Hokage was weak. Otherwise, the coup plan within the Uchiha clan, it would not have been delayed until now. The third Hokage fought with Whitebeard and unfortunately lost. The Nine Tails Jinchuriki was abducted by Whitebeard. The third Hokage is still lying in the hospital. Although he woke up, it was difficult to get up. In just one night, so many major events happened, and all the major ninja clans in the entire Kanoha village were shocked. Who would have thought that as the top of Kanoha village's combat power? The third Hokage, who is known as the strongest Hokage in history, actually lost to an outsider. If it was defeated by an outsider outside of Kanoha, it could barely be said that the third Hokage was ambushed. But this was defeated inside the Kanoha village. It was in his own home court that he couldn't beat an outsider. This, he still lost? This matter must not be publicized too much. At least, we cannot let the civilians in the village know about this. In the Hokage building of Leaf Village, one of Kanoha village's higher-ups, Hamura, adjusted his glasses and said seriously after pushing them up. At this time, a group of people gathered in the office of the third Hokage, but this office was missing only the third Hokage. Danzo was also present. Although there was no fluctuation in his expression on his face, he was already overjoyed in his heart. He coughed and interrupted, well indeed. But a ninja village cannot always be without a Hokage. Danzo didn't care about what impact this matter would have if civilians knew about it. What he cares about is the position of Hokage. Danzo looked around at a group of people. He continued, Sar. Sarutobi is now seriously injured and hospitalized. The best medical ninjas in Kanoha Village Hospital all say that he will have difficulty getting out of bed within a month, let alone handling government affairs. I think we should take this opportunity to reselect. But before Danzo finished speaking, 
He was interrupted by Koharu with white hair and narrow eyes. We have already thought about this, Koharu said. Sarutobi really can't handle Hokage affairs within a month. And he also asked Umbu to tell us that during this month, me, Hamura and Yudanzo will handle Hokage affairs together. Koharu paused for a while. She glanced at Danzo and continued calmly. Until a month later when his body recovers a bit and he can get out of bed, then transfer back to Hokage affairs, Danzo's eyes widened slightly. What does she mean? Isn't this any different from before? Weren't Kanoha Village's affairs handled by them four together? According to Danzo's original idea, he wanted to take this opportunity to let everyone elect an interim Hokage. And among all higher-ups in Kanoha Village which person is more suitable than Danzo? But Danzo didn't expect that his suggestion hadn't been spoken yet, but it was directly interrupted and blocked. Especially when they heard the words, as conveyed to us by the Umbu, Danzo's fists were clenched tight. His teeth were on the verge of being ground to dust. That damned monkey, lying in bed like a waste of space, yet still unable to let go of the power of the Hokage, not giving even a sliver of opportunity, was he prepared for this all along? At this point, Yudatane Koharu spoke. Sarutobi has already sent Kakashi to pursue the Jinchuriki and Whitebeard. If he can keep up with the Jinchuriki then we can grasp the movements of the Jinchuriki and Whitebeard. According to what I learned from Sarutobi, Whitebeard and the Jinchuriki are going outside the village to find Tsunade. Nara Shikaku leaned against the wall, a blade of grass in his mouth, and he interjected. I heard that Lady Tsunade has been active within the borders of the Land of Fire in recent years. If they are looking for Lady Tsunade, they definitely won't leave the Land of Fire. Mitokato Hamura adjusted her glasses, nodding. In that case, we might be able to start by finding Tsunade's whereabouts. There's a problem. Hyuga Hayashi was also here. His Byakugan eyes were calm. What if other ninja villages find out that the Jinchuriki has left Kanoha and they take action? If it was during Kanoha's most resolute times, everyone present would give a very definite answer, declare war directly with the other party. But, Kanoha is not so tough now. The departure of the Sanin, the hospitalization of the Hokage, distrust towards the Uchiha clan, the departure of the Jinchuriki. These negative buffs are all added to Kanoha village. It's hard to be tough, but there are always exceptions. Oomph. Is this even a question? That would naturally be. As an exception, Danzo was about to speak, but before he could finish his sentence, he was interrupted again. Hamura took a deep breath and, after scanning everyone, he answered. So this matter should be kept secret if it can be kept secret. If it is still known by other ninja villages, we'll discuss it then. Everything will be discussed after Sarutobi recovers. Danzo. As for Whitebeard, Hamureo said. I suggest that Whitebeard be internally wanted by Kanoha. Internal wanted? A newly coined term made everyone present look at each other in confusion. Hamura explained, This is a wanted order that only Kanoha ninjas can know about. A reward of 50 million Ryo for Whitebeard. Any Kanoha ninja who can capture Whitebeard alive or bring back his head and bring back the Jinchuriki can get the reward. 50 million Ryo. Sarutobi Asuma, who was standing in the corner smoking a cigarette, exhaled a smoke ring a very reasonable number. He is able to defeat his father, third Hokage. It is really worth this bounty. On the streets of Kanoha village, Akimichi Chuji held a bag of barbecue-flavored potato chip. He gnawed on them while tears streamed down his face, speaking to Shikamaru, Shikamaru, I heard from my father that Naruto left Kanoha. Woo woo woo. Our newly made good friend left us. From now on our three-man team will only have two people left. Where did this three-man team come from? Shikamaru with a full head of black lines. We only knew Naruto for a few days and we became a three-man team. He looked at the street ahead. Fell into silence. Shikamaru and Choji came to Naruto's home. What came into view was a long street that had been sealed off. The entrance to the street was blocked by caution tape. But you could still see inside full of scars. Like it had been demolished. My father didn't tell me much. Shikamaru crossed his fingers behind his head and said with an indifferent face. But I can still roughly know some situations. Naruto left Kanoha with his giant father. This matter caused quite a stir among those adults. Shikamaru will Naruto come back? Choji's eyes were teary. This wasn't an act, and his eyes were red from crying. But his hands didn't stop moving, and neither did his mouth. A bag of potato chips was quickly eaten halfway through. He will. I will definitely become Hokage. He recalled Naruto's words in front of him and Choji, recalling those deep blue eyes that were more determined than his peers. Shikamaru affirmed again. He will definitely come back. Choji, stop crying. He inserted his hands into his pockets, where a handkerchief once lent to Naruto was kept. 
Shikamaru said, Although I don't know why I have this feeling, I always think that when Uzumaki Naruto returns to Konoha, we will see a completely different him. Shikamaru, is that, is that true? Have I ever lied to you? Uh, achoo! Naruto rubbed his nose vigorously. His nose was a bit itchy today. From morning till now, he had already sneezed dozens of times. Pops, how are we going to find Tsunade? Naruto asked curiously while dragging his suitcase. Gururarara. Whitebeard laughed. That medical ninja called Tsunade is a ninja from Konoha. Konoha ninjas must know a lot about Konoha ninjas. Just ask that white-haired brat. White hair. Naruto was taken aback. Is it the masked ninja uncle? Yes. That brat is following behind. He has been following for an hour now. Did you see that stray dog? Whitebeard said. Ah. Uh. Naruto hurriedly looked back. Sure enough, he saw a stray dog following far behind them. If you didn't look carefully, you wouldn't see it. That strange stray dog seemed to have heard their conversation, and its body stiffened involuntarily. Kakashi. Ataki Kakashi, once a genius of the Kanoha village, a veteran of the Great Ninja War, and a member of Umbu for several years, naturally possesses exceptional tracking skills. Especially considering that Whitebeard and Naruto did not conceal their departure traces, Kakashi could easily keep up with just a bit of careful observation. Kakashi is not some hot-blooded fool. He is not lacking in awareness. Lady Tsunade is the successor of the Senju clan, also the disciple of the third Hokage. In the ninja world, she is known as Sanin Tsunade, a prominent figure on par with the other two of the Sanin. Kakashi reveals his dead fisheye. His Sharingan is hidden under his forehead protector. Kakashi, who was exposed by Whitebeard on the spot, had no choice but to dispel his transformation technique and revert to his original appearance. The reason he is explaining everything he knows to Whitebeard and Naruto is naturally because of the Murakuma Jairi that occasionally strikes the ground behind him. This kind of movement makes Kakashi's eyelids twitch. This is a man who can even defeat the third Hokage. Moreover, he did not see any external injuries on Whitebeard. That is to say, the third Hokage didn't even leave any scars on Whitebeard before being defeated and lying in the hospital. How powerful is that? Kakashi sweeps away the distractions in his heart. He takes a deep breath. He continues, in addition to having strength comparable to Akage, she is also an excellent medical ninja. In the entire ninja world, there are no medical ninjas more formidable than her. Finding Lady Tsunade is not difficult, Kakashi gets straight to the point, because she has a well-known weakness, gambling. Plus, she usually only operates within the fire country. If you want to find her, just raid various casinos in the fire country. This is the best way to find her, and also the most effective way. Actually, at this time, Kakashi breathes a slight sigh of relief. Before, he was not quite sure. Now he can be 100% sure. Whitebeard and Naruto do not intend to leave the fire country. At least, not at present. The goal of this father and son pair without blood relation is very clear. They want to find Lady Tsunade. That's all there is to it. Gururarara. Stupid son. You see, now we know how to find that person. Whitebeard laughs heartily. Time passed. As night fell, a week has passed since Whitebeard took Naruto away from Konoha village. During this week, Whitebeard did not stop training Naruto. Naruto's miserable childhood did not get a break. Pops, it's, it's so heavy. Naruto's legs are trembling. His body is tied with many ropes, and he carries a stone on his back that weighs at least over 100 pounds. A five-year-old child should not be able to carry such a stone, but Naruto actually carried it. However, Naruto staggers forward only a few steps before he feels all his muscles wailing. Pops, if I fall down, I'll be crushed by this stone. Naruto tries to seek help from Whitebeard with tears streaming down his face. Unfortunately, he sought help from the wrong person. Foolish son. You say this light stone is heavy? Don't put down the stone. If you can't walk, crawl for me. Whitebeard raises Murakuma Jairi and chops it down with one stroke. The howling wind behind him scares Naruto's little face pale white. He doesn't know where he burst out with some potential and ran forward several steps wildly. He narrowly dodged Murakuma Jairi that fell behind him crack, a straight crack appeared on the ground. Starting from Murakuma Jairi's blade edge, it spread toward Naruto's direction. Until it spread under Naruto's crotch, it was caught by his eyes. This sight scared Naruto so much that his clothes were instantly soaked in cold sweat. His pops is not holding back at all. If he dodges a bit late, would he be split in half by a single stroke? Gururarara. In my hometown sea, there is a saying, as long as you are willing to put in 200 times the effort of ordinary people, even if you are an ordinary person, 
You can serve as a Marine Admiral, Whitebeard, holding his Najinata, boldly said, Stupid son, you are still far from putting in two hundred times the effort of ordinary people. If I had received such torturous training when I was young, I might have developed a psychological shadow towards the profession of ninja. Kakashi, who was walking behind, muttered a complaint. Kakashi raised his eyelids and saw the scene ahead, and he said, Lord Whitebeard, we are about to reach a relatively large town within the fire country. He had walked this road before. So he has an impression. Oh. Whitebeard's gaze was taken back from the trembling Naruto, who was walking forward, and he was also looking at the distance. It looks like it is indeed a big town. Whitebeard joked. I wonder how much treasure can be robbed from such a town? What? Robbery? Kakashi's eyes widened. He suddenly remembered that Whitebeard had said that he was a pirate. Wait, wait. Kakashi took a cold breath. How could he forget this key identity? Kakashi hurriedly said, Lord Whitebeard, although this town is large, there may not be many rich people inside. Gururara. Seeing Kakashi, who couldn't hold back, Whitebeard laughed extremely happily. It feels like teasing a little kid. Don't worry. My Whitebeard pirate group has never robbed an ordinary person since it set sail. Whitebeard laughed. But I am a pirate. How can I be indifferent when passing by a town? Lord Whitebeard, what exactly do you want to do? Kakashi didn't quite understand. White-haired kid, can you draw? Instead of answering, Whitebeard asked Kakashi a very outrageous question. Yes, but not proficient. But Kakashi still responded. Whitebeard laughed even happier. Ten minutes later, Whitebeard held Murakumajiri in his left hand and carried a big tree that he had cut off the branches with his right hand. The top of the tree was tied with a huge black cloth with the logo of the Whitebeard Pirates. Kakashi didn't know why Whitebeard asked him to draw this. But at this time, he had a bad premonition. The three of them walked to the entrance of the town. There are still many civilians in the fire country here. When a group of civilians in the fire country saw a giant more than six meters tall appear, their eyes were all wide open. Their expressions were all dumbfounded. Before these civilians in the fire country could react, Whitebeard inserted the tree he was carrying into the ground with one hand down. Bang! The tree trunk sank into the ground at least several meters deep. The ground was trembling. The pirate flag at the top of the tree was rustling in the wind, it was a white skull with a crescent beard. Foolish son, you are my son and also a member of the Whitebeard Pirates. You are also the first crew member of the new Whitebeard Pirates. Now it's time to do what pirates should do. Starting today, this is a town under the jurisdiction of the Whitebeard Pirates. Little ninjas in Shinobi World, pay me protection money. Gururara. Whitebeard's hearty laughter seemed to spread across half of the town, revealing his king-like aura. Kakashi's forehead was dripping with cold sweat. How did this happen? He didn't expect that Whitebeard asked him to help draw that strange flag, just to do this kind of thing. He declared that this town was under the protection of the Whitebeard pirates, and he wanted to collect protection money here? How was this different from declaring war? He looked at Whitebeard's towering figure, and then at the pirate flag fluttering above. Kakashi felt a headache. He could only hope that Naruto, the son of his teacher Minato, would be able to persuade his old man. But now, Pops, is this what being a pirate is like? Naruto didn't try to dissuade Whitebeard, but instead found it very interesting. Even though he was carrying a huge rock that made his body tremble, he still tried to lift his head and look at the pirate flag above. Kakashi. Oh no. The child of his teacher. He wouldn't be completely corrupted, would he? What if Naruto didn't want to be Hokage one day, but instead wanted to be a pirate? That would be a big problem. Gurara, that's right. Being a pirate, you have to be like this. Whitebeard looked down at a group of civilians from the Land of Fire, taking in their shocked and fearful expressions. Whitebeard grinned. This smile was very cheerful in Naruto's eyes. But in the eyes of these civilians from the Land of Fire, it was like a monster, sneering at them. Giant, giant, run. Finally someone reacted. Quick, go and inform the ninja in the town. He's a pirate. The giant is a pirate. Wah. Monster don't come over. Where are the ninja? Ninja come out quickly. Idiot. Run. The panicked civilians from the land of fire ran towards this side, screaming. Some people were so scared that they threw their goods on the ground and ran wildly towards the back. But their terrified screams made Naruto feel a bit uncomfortable. Naruto muttered. Why do they call Pops a monster? Gurara. This is fear. Whitebeard didn't care about how high-profile he was and what kind of commotion he would cause. As one of the four emperors of the New World, he didn't know what low-profile meant. If it was in the New World, the Whitebeard pirates could just claim to protect a place, 
and that place only needed to pay protection money. The people there would not be afraid, because they all knew the good reputation of the white beard pirate. But in this place called the Ninja World, his white beard pirates were indeed unknown. The three of them just barged into this town. Wherever he go people retreated. TSK, that noble really knows how to enjoy themselves. Saratobi Takahito was an elite jonin from the Saratobi clan of Kanoha. He recently took a ninja mission in Kanoha to escort a noble from the land of fire from one city to another. Although the ninja war had ended, there were still many bandits, rogue ninjas and robbers in the land of fire. Those nobles from the land of fire naturally cherished their lives. They would spend a lot of money to hire ninjas from Kanoha to protect them. Escorting one trip had a reward of 3 million Rio. Such a mission was very popular in Kanoha, but unfortunately, Saratobi Takahito was the nephew of the third Hokage. The ninja missions that others had to compete for, he could get them casually. Who said it's not? Next to Saratobi Takahito, there was also a Saratobi clan ninja, an elite chunin of Kanoha. He said, that nobleman's generosity is quite something. He invited the two of us ninja to that kind of place. After saying that, he sniffed the perfume on his clothes and showed a nostalgic smile. Next time we pass by here, I'll invite brother Takahito for another special massage. Ha ha ha. Saratobi Takahito laughed. Deal. You can't go back on your word. However, just as they were about to return to their temporary residence, there was a commotion ahead that caught their attention. Hmm? Saratobi Takahito frowned. What happened over there? The clan member next to him seemed to be a sensory ninja. He listened carefully. Brother Takahito, I think I heard someone shouting about pirates invading. There are thieves in the town. Pirates. Saratobi Takahito was stunned. That's not right. If this town was a coastal town, it would be understandable to encounter pirates. But this was an inland town. In this kind of place, where did the pirates come from? Ninja. Ninja. A group of civilians from the Land of Fire who ran over here in a hurry, suddenly saw two ninjas with forehead protectors, as if they saw their saviors. Ninja. There are pirates. There are monsters. Someone gasped and told them what they saw and heard. Pirates? Monsters? Are there pirates or monsters? Sarutobi Takahito asked with a frown. Brother Takahito, I think we don't need to ask. Suddenly, the clan member next to him swallowed hard, his tone very tense and nervous, and interrupted. It seems that we have found a formidable guy. Takahito brother, he hurriedly said, look over there. Sarutobi Takahito looked at the direction in the distance. Upon first glance, he was stunned, his eyes widening in surprise. What is that? The 6.66-meter-tall Whitebeard was too conspicuous in this town, taller than many of the single-story houses and two-story shops on the roadside. It was indeed difficult to overlook such a man. Whether it was Saratobi Takahito or the Chunin Ninja of the Saratobi clan standing next to him, they had been escorting the nobles for more than half a month. During this time, they had not returned to Kanoha village and were completely unaware of Whitebeard, who had made a big name for himself in Kanoha village. Their astonishment was understandable. Oomph. Saratobi Takahito's face was solemn. So that's how it is. Is he a monster-like pirate? A combination of a pirate and a giant. Perhaps this guy is a wanted criminal. He took out his ninja tools, his serious face revealing a hint of anticipation. If we take down this pirate's head, perhaps our gains from this mission could exceed 5 million Rio. This guy doesn't have a ninja forehead protector, nor does he have a ninja forehead protector. He's neither a missing ninja, nor a rebel ninja. We have a great advantage in a two-on-one fight against such a big target. Saratobi Takahito couldn't help but lick the kanai he had just taken out. The two of us will hunt him down. Boom. 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 Whitebeard's huge body made much more noise when stepping on the ground than ordinary people. Each footstep sounded like a war drum in people's ears, causing many people's hearts to tremble along with it. In the town, the civilians of the Land of Fire were shivering in their homes. The braver ones could only dare to open the window cracks and quietly look outside. Should I put away my Kanoha forehead protector first? Kakashi, who was following behind, was full of black lines. He felt that he looked like an accomplice to the pirate. Coupled with his Kanoha forehead protector. Good heavens! Kanoha is colluding with pirates. Kakashi looked at Naruto again and was slightly shocked. How did Naruto manage to hold on? He has been carrying this stone for nearly a kilometer. A five-year-old child carrying a stone weighing hundreds of pounds and walking 1 km on foot. That kind of determination that seemed to be able to crush one's teeth. It was shocking to watch. Is it the power of the Nine Tails? Or is it the Uzumaki bloodline? Or did Minato-sensei leave behind some talent? 
Kakashi didn't understand, but he was greatly shocked. Just at this moment, Whitebeard, who was walking at the front of the three, stepped on an inconspicuous mud pit. We've got him. A voice full of ecstasy suddenly sounded. Earth release. Art of inner decapitation. Earth release. Art of inner decapitation. Saratobi Takahito emerged from the ground, his arms wrapped around Whitebeard's ankles. Because he couldn't grasp with one hand, he had to use this action, like hugging a tree. Now! Saratobi Takahito tried to drag Whitebeard underground, while shouting loudly at his companion. The other Saratobi clan ninja was hiding behind a roof ridge. He saw that Saratobi Takahito was about to control the giant. He immediately leaned out, quickly forming hand seals. Fire release. Great flame technique. He aimed a fire release ninjutsu at Whitebeard's head. Hey hey. Kakashi, who was walking behind, narrowed his eyes. What's the deal with these two ninjas? Don't they know who Whitebeard is? He wanted to stop the conflict, but it seemed too late. When the great flame technique was about to hit Whitebeard, Whitebeard blew a breath in that direction. A breath that could extinguish even magma, when facing a fire release ninjutsu, actually blew the fire release back along its original path. The returning Great Flame technique scared the Saratobi clan's ninja so much that his fingers forming seals trembled. He wanted to dodge, but he couldn't. SSSSS. The flames engulfed him completely. His clothes were instantly ignited, and his skin was burned in the blink of an eye. He had to roll down from the roof ridge and fall to the ground, rolling on the ground trying to extinguish the flames on his body. Kid, how long are you going to hold on? Whitebeard looked down and met Saratobi Kazoku's horrified eyes. Saratobi Takahito realized that something was wrong, because his best technique, decapitation technique, couldn't drag this giant underground. This giant was too strong, so strong that he couldn't move him at all. Whitebeard slightly lifted his foot and then stomped on the ground. Bang! The entire street shook violently for a moment, numerous cracks spread on the ground, and the ground under his feet shattered. Saratobi Takahito, who was holding on to Whitebeard's ankle, was shocked and vomited a mouthful of blood. His arm also lost its strength and let go. Whitebeard picked him up. If picking up Naruto, a five-year-old child, is like picking up a newborn mouse, then picking up an adult is like picking up a chick. Wait, wait a minute. Kakashi hurriedly stepped forward and said, there must be some misunderstanding here. Hataki. Hataki Kakashi. At this moment, Saratobi Takahito, who was picked up by Whitebeard and in extreme pain all over his body, opened his eyes and saw a familiar face. Saratobi Takahito was a bit confused. Wasn't this giant supposed to be a pirate? Why would Hataki Kakashi be with this pirate? What's going on? Gurera Arara. White-haired brat. Whitebeard glanced at Kakashi. When someone attacks me it means. This person has the courage to challenge the emperor of the sea. How can such a battle stop just because you say so? Under Saratobi Takahito's horrified gaze, Whitebeard tensed his arm muscles and threw him out directly. The incredible force shot Saratobi Takahito through the air like a cannonball fired from its chamber. He smashed directly into a building, but then flew out from the other side of the building. He crashed into a building on another street, then flew out from the other side of that building. He smashed through several houses in succession. Only then did he fall under the ruins. Kakashi didn't know if the Saratobi clan's ninja was still alive. He could only pray for him in his heart, hoping that the guy's physical fitness was a bit better. Two ninjas couldn't even last ten seconds in Whitebeard's hands. The civilians of the Land of Fire didn't understand what it meant to solve an Chunin ninja and a Jounin ninja in such a short time. But that didn't prevent them from understanding one thing. Even the ninja is no match for that giant pirate. Gurarara! Whitebeard's Murakuma Jairi fiercely slammed into the ground, and an invisible wave of air spread around. It also blew Naruto to scream. He fell directly to the ground. I am Whitebeard of the Whitebeard Pirates. Whitebeard's heroic voice echoed throughout the town. In ten minutes, the one in charge of this town must show up before me. Gurarara. The invisible conqueror's hockey was only lightly brushed under precise control. It didn't stun a large group of people, but it also made people shudder with fear. Ten minutes later, a group of people dressed in extraordinary clothes appeared in front of Whitebeard. They were not civilians of the Land of Fire, but nobles of the Land of Fire. He don't know what the management structure of the Land of Fire is like. The manager of a town is a hereditary nobleman. In this group, the leader is a noble, it is also the fire country noble that Saratobi Takahito has been escorting during this period. There are more than a dozen people around the nobleman. These are all a group of sword-wielding samurai. Gudong, 
The throat of the nobleman from the land of fire surged up and down, and he swallowed his saliva with difficulty, unable to suppress his fear. His image is very consistent with Whitebeard's stereotype of nobles, dressed in gorgeous and exquisite clothes but neglected to exercise so that he is potbellied. This makes those gorgeous clothes look very abrupt on his fat body. Hi, pirate. The nobleman from the land of fire looked at the devastation here. He just inherited his ancestor's noble status, and his courage is not comparable to his ancestors at all. The fat face piled up with smiles. You, what do you want? I am the nobleman of this town and also its manager. He felt that he was particularly unlucky today. He spent three million Rio to hire two leaf ninjas to escort him back. As a result, nothing happened on the way, making him feel that he had spent such a large sum of money for nothing. Then you have to spend money to invite two ninjas to drink wine. Get along well with those two Kanoha ninjas. Then, there are pirates in town. When it comes to ordinary bandits, he believes that his group of over a dozen samurai retainers can easily defeat them. But when he saw Whitebeard himself, that idea immediately vanished, and all that remained in his mind was fear. Whitebeard looked at him disdainfully. I didn't expect there to be such rubbish as nobles in the ninja world. Nobleman from Land of Fire. Lord Whitebeard. Kakashi was afraid that Whitebeard would kill him. He reminded him in a low voice. The nobles and lords in the ninja world are all special characters. There are unwritten rules in the ninja world. Generally, ninjas will not kill nobles and lords. White-haired kid, are you teaching me what to do? Whitebeard asked one sentence, making Kakashi speechless immediately. How can this man be so domineering? Kakashi chose to shut up. Whitebeard looked at the nobleman from the land of fire. That kind of gaze scared him so much that his bladder tightened and cold sweat soaked his gorgeous robe. Gurarara! Whitebeard grinned and said, The treasures of nobles should be quite a lot. Foolish son, watch carefully and learn well for your pops. As pirates on the sea, we must hoard treasures. Yes, yes, pops. Naruto who was pressed under a stone tried hard to raise his little head and looked at Whitebeard's back figure. Hey, hey, hey. Don't teach Naruto anything weird. Kakashi twitched at the corner of his mouth. Wanted to say something but stopped. Today, in a town called Bamboo Town within the fire country of the ninja world, many people are busy. Because this is the order of the noble. In the large town, all the symbols of the fire country are topped with the flag of the Whitebeard Pirates, symbolizing that a town with tens of thousands of people is being protected by a pirate group. And the so-called Whitebeard Pirates actually only have two people, one of whom is just a mascot. Whitebeard. Naruto. Who is the mascot? It's obvious at a glance. Many of the taller buildings in this town also have the flag of the Whitebeard Pirates hung on them. It's very conspicuous. The local hospital also received two injured people. They are both ninjas from Kanoha village and members of the Saratobi clan. It's because of these two injured people. That's why the whole town is so obedient. This is troublesome. What's the difference between doing this and declaring war on the fire country? Kakashi helps Naruto drag his suitcase. His dead fish eyes helplessly look back at the town behind him. Especially when he sees that one after another white beard pirate flag is rising, even higher than the symbolic flag of the fire country. It makes him numb, but he can't stop it. He knows who is stronger between him and Whitebeard. He can't expect that the nobles of the fire country can maintain their hardness and arrogance in front of Whitebeard. Kakashi even feels that Kanoha takes nobles too seriously. So much so that when nobles deal with Kanoha, they are so arrogant. On the contrary, when facing Whitebeard, they are even more cowardly than stray dogs. Forget it. Let those big names in the fire country and those old guys in Kanoha village worry about these headaches. Dismissing his thoughts, Kakashi chose to give up thinking. Anyway, his task is just to stay with Naruto all the time and try not to let Whitebeard take Naruto away from the fire country. As for other things, it's better not to meddle too much. He looked at Naruto again. Naruto's stone-carrying training has ended. What followed was a new treasure-carrying training. The so-called treasure is the protection fee that Whitebeard extorted provided by that big loser noble with great pain. You see Naruto's legs, hands, abdomen, and back are all tied with weight. The weights are not stones or iron block, but stacks of banknotes, gold bars one by one. Good, so heavy. Naruto's forehead veins bulged out, his little face was red with strain. These gold bars are so much smaller than stones, why are they so heavy? The stacks of banknotes tied to his body are fine to say. For Naruto at present, he can bear this weight but the gold bars offered by the noble of fire country. Let Naruto experience the pain of being rich. Urarara, foolish son, you think this little treasure is heavy? 
Whitebeard carried Kumokiri and laughed mockingly. When I was at sea, every harvest was hundreds of times what it is now. Gurarara, we just missing a big ship, Whitebeard regretted. If there was a big ship that could store treasures, it would be nice. Kakashi silently said. Ships can't move on land. Actually, Kakashi was a bit confused. Why would a man like Whitebeard want these treasures? Is he really short of money? Doesn't seem like it. According to Kakashi's understanding of Whitebeard, Whitebeard always dines and dashes. He doesn't have the concept of paying. In other words, he doesn't need to use money at all. So he coerced a nobleman from the land of fire to hand over protection money and designated a town as the territory of the Whitebeard pirates. What is Whitebeard doing this for, exactly? White-haired kid. At this moment, Whitebeard suddenly glanced at Kakashi. He stroked his chin, thoughtfully said, Ninjas like you have a bunch of unusual tricks. Do you also have ninjutsu for storing items? Yes, there is. Kakashi did not deny. Because during the time following Whitebeard and Naruto, Kakashi used sealing scrolls in front of them. The soldier pills he carries are all in the sealing scroll. Can anyone learn this trick? Whitebeard asked. Kakashi thought for a moment. Almost. Gurarara. Then you teach this to my foolish son. And in the future, the treasures obtained by my Whitebeard pirates will have a place to store. Whitebeard grinned. Lord Whitebeard, do you truly not know about ninjutsu? Kakashi was stunned and couldn't help but ask this question. He remembered that sealing technique is not a high-difficulty ninjutsu, right? Basically all the ninjas in each village in the ninja world can do it, right? Gurarara, what? Want to get information from me? Whitebeard laughed indifferently. I really can't use ninjutsu. Those tricks of spitting fire and water were only seen in the ninja world. This answer made Kakashi silent. Doesn't that mean that Whitebeard is indeed not a ninja? If he isn't a ninja and lacks a significant amount of chakra in his body, how can his physical form possess such immense strength? How can he use the Kekiai Genkai that can vibrate? Wait a minute. Kakashi's pupils shrank sharply, thinking of a very critical question. His tone was very shocked. Lord Whitebeard, do you not even know how to extract chakra? He recalled that when Whitebeard used that powerful brute force and the Kekiai Genkai, there is no chakra fluctuation all over his body. No. Whitebeard was as confident as ever. I haven't even heard of it. Such an answer made Kakashi doubt life. He felt that what he learned in ninja school was all fed to dogs and encountered his knowledge blind spot. How is it possible? Doesn't that mean that there is not a large amount of chakra in Whitebeard's body, but there is no chakra in his body at all? Or his chakra is comparable to ordinary people? This. It's incredible. You white-haired kid. Why do you always like to ask questions? Whitebeard frowned unhappily. Do you want to teach Naruto or not? Kakashi actually didn't want to teach. He didn't like to teach others. He felt that he was an umbu ninja. And he's not good at it either. Kakashi explained. Storing items is actually a kind of sealing technique, which temporarily stores items in the sealing scroll. All of these require solid ninjutsu foundation and enough chakra. Naruto's physical fitness is indeed different from his peers at present but he has not yet entered ninja school and does not know how to extract chakra. There is not enough chakra belonging to him in his body. Why are you talking so much nonsense? Just start teaching from chakra extraction technique. Whitebeard was decisive and didn't give Kakashi a chance to refuse. Also let me see how you ninjas spit fire and water. For this kind of strange ability called ninjutsu that can exert similar abilities to devil fruit without eating devil fruit, Whitebeard is indeed quite interested. Kakashi. Okay. Faced with a Najinata bigger than a person, faced with Whitebeard who even the third Hokage couldn't beat, Kakashi compromised. Eh. Naruto on the side heard this and immediately forgot about his fatigue. His face was full of surprise. Can I learn ninjutsu? White hair uncle, are you going to teach me ninjutsu? Yes. Kakashi's answer was weak. Give up struggling. In the robbed town, there is no trace of Tsunade. Whitebeard and others left with the treasure. Gurarara. The nobles in your fire country are much more cowardly than the nobles on the sea. Whitebeard made a sharp comment. In his memory, the nobles on the sea were all arrogant and very worshipful of the trashy celestial dragons. Even though they are not celestial dragons, but they regard themselves as celestial dragons, and imitate the behavior of celestial dragons, in short, very arrogant. Kakashi didn't know what to say. After all, it sounded like Whitebeard had robbed many nobles. This kind of man doesn't take the powerful and noble seriously at all. Kakashi even doubts that even if the Lord of the Land of Fire appears in front of Whitebeard, Whitebeard would probably rob him without hesitation. Is this a pirate? More outrageous than rebel ninjas. 
The three of them continued to head towards the next town, and it wasn't until they walked from afternoon to evening that they finally stopped, mainly because Naruto couldn't hold on any longer. Plop, Naruto fell to the ground in a dog-eating mud posture. He didn't know if his nose had been hardened by falling for a long time. This time, he didn't bleed from his nose. Today's training volume is more than twice as much as yesterday's. However, every time Naruto was about to give up, Whitebeard would give him a fist of love without hesitation. The strong will to survive made the power of Nine Tails surge in Naruto's body, forcibly restoring some of his physical strength to him. Then, Naruto could move again. Speaking of which, it's strange. Naruto has been having very similar strange dreams these days. He dreamed of a very vague but extremely huge figure who was cursing in his dream every day. Do these humans even understand the concept of a normal father-son relationship? This fist of love is aimed at taking this kid's life, right? This kid is also a fool. Is this kind of killing behavior also called practice training? This is referred to as ending his life. Ah, here it comes again. I have saved him 50 times. This kid is on the verge of death for the 50th time. If I get the chance, I'll for sure eat up this smelly kid. Well, with this kind of cursing. Naruto, who has a big heart, didn't take it seriously. He has now gotten up from the ground. Lying on the ground in a dog-eating mud posture for 10 seconds or so is considered rest for him. Naruto hurriedly unloaded the gold bars from his body. Also unloaded stacks of banknotes. He rubbed his muddy face but ended up making his face dirtier. However, a pair of blue eyes on his dirty face were very bright at this moment. He was looking at Kakashi. That kind of look made Kakashi feel a little uncomfortable. Uncle Ninja. Naruto was about to say something. My name is Hataki Kakashi. Kakashi, who was holding a copy of Ika Ika Paradise, said helplessly, I'm only 19 years old. Can you stop calling me uncle? Yes, Uncle Kakashi. Naruto seemed to have stars in his eyes. Teach me ninjutsu now. Now? Kakashi was taken aback. He knew how hard Naruto had trained. Doesn't this kid ever get tired? Yes. Naruto nodded heavily. As long as I know ninjutsu and learn medical ninjutsu, then when Pops gets sick in the future, I can also treat my Pops too. This. Is this Naruto's source of motivation? Gurarara. Worthy of being my son. Whitebeard was very happy. To become a ninja, you must first learn to extract chakra. Kakashi had no choice but to act as a ninja school teacher once again. He tried hard to recall some theories that his ninja school teacher had told him when he was in school at Ninja Academy. Chakra is the necessary energy needed when performing Genjutsu, Taijutsu, Ninjutsu, Kekiai Genkai and other techniques. In other words, if a ninja runs out of chakra, he is like a lamb waiting to be slaughtered. Kakashi took out a mini scroll, about the size of a thumb, maybe a little bit bigger than a thumb. This is the chakra extraction technique, one of the compulsory subjects for students in the ninja academy. Of course, if they are children from some families, they would have learned it before they even started school. Night came quickly. In the forest, a huge bonfire was lit, illuminating dozens of meters around. More than a dozen wild pigs that had been skinned were strung on wood and formed a circle around the bonfire. It can be described as a whole family of pigs neatly arranged, which can be described as a tragedy of extermination. Sprinkle the seasoning on top. The seasoning is from Kakashi's ceiling scroll. He usually sprinkles seasoning on soldier pills. After all, if he chews these soldier pills directly, it is actually a bit difficult for him to swallow. Now, the seasoning was confiscated. Pops, Uncle Kakashi. Naruto's face was full of surprise. I, I seem to have extracted chakra. You can see that there is a faint chakra fluctuation in Naruto's palm. Although it looks very weak, but it is indeed visible to the naked eye. It took half an hour, Kakashi thoughtfully commented. To some extent, it's an excellent achievement. If it were in the Ninja Academy, you'd likely expect it to be among the top five in the class. He is worthy of being the child of Minato-sensei and Kushina. He inherited the excellent genes of the teacher and the teacher's wife. However, Kakashi didn't know. A certain nine tails inside Naruto rolled his eyes fiercely. If it weren't for the fact that it felt that disturbing this kid's extraction of chakra would likely cause this kid to go for suicide training again, it would have messed up Naruto a long time ago. The nine tails wished to torment this kid fiercely. The resentment towards Minato and Kushina. All imposed on this kid. The main reason is that ever since this kid recognized Whitebeard as his father, the suicidal-like special training scared the nine tails. Although tailed beasts can be resurrected. However, in the case of the nine tails, it's quite exceptional. Because its body was forcibly divided into two parts, 
It doesn't know if it will be resurrected once this part dies with the Jinchuriki. That guy really annoys the me. The nine tails in Naruto's body grumbled, obviously referring to Whitebeard. Originally, before Whitebeard appeared, Naruto's miserable experience was a joke in the eyes of nine tails. It wished Naruto's childhood could be more miserable. Looking at the pitiful child of Minato and Kushina, would it feel pity? Would it sympathize? Laugh to death. Nine Tails was overjoyed, until Whitebeard appeared. The situation reversed. Originally miserable Naruto, under the care and love of Whitebeard, this kid situation actually got better and better. Damn it. This guy who looks like a human but not like a human, where did he come from? At this point, Whitebeard's hearty laughter interrupted Nine Tails' thoughts. Gurarara, is it a good achievement? Stupid son, it seems you were born to be Hokage of Konoha. Pops, I will definitely become Hokage. No, I want to surpass Grandpa Hokage. Naruto's smile was very bright on his face. He said very seriously to Kakashi. Uncle Kakashi, thank you. This smile made Kakashi feel a little dazed. Originally, he is the disciple of Minato. As long as he gave a little care to Minato's son, this child would be very happy and would show a cheerful smile. Kakashi, oh Kakashi, what have you been doing for these five years? What have you been doing? In a remote small town in the fire country. At night, the tavern is brightly lit. Whitebeard and the Jinchuriki are looking for me? Tsunade, who had gambled away all her money and owed a huge debt, was sitting in this small tavern, quite drunk. Her fair face was a little flushed. The gaze of Tsunade, one of the Sanin, seemed somewhat unfocused. When she glanced at the two masked Umbu ninjas next to her, there was a bit of a confused look in her eyes. Tsunade frowned and said, You guys came all the way here to tell me this? She yelled. Who is Whitebeard? Hush. A sweat broke out on an Umbu ninja's forehead. He hurriedly reminded Tsunade. Tsunade-sama, please keep your voice down a little. The Jinchuriki has always been a secret of Kanoha village. Tisk. Tsunade didn't care. She grabbed a glass of wine and drank it all in one gulp. An Umbu ninja took out a scroll and wanted to hand it to Tsunade in front of him. Tsunade-sama, all the situations that have happened in Kanoha these days are recorded in this scroll. In this place, some things are really not good to say out loud. Please take a look. As a result, Tsunade directly grabbed it, and very violently spread the scroll on the table. Not afraid of being seen by others at all, Tsunade, with blurred eyes, scanned the words on the scroll. The more she looked at it, the more sober she became. She was gradually sobering up as if she was pretending to be drunk. Her eyebrows slowly frowned and then relaxed again. Tsunade gloated. The Hokage couldn't beat Whitebeard on Kanoha and was beaten into the hospital. The Jinchuriki he painstakingly brainwashed was also abducted by others. That? An Umbu ninja interrupted. Tsunade-sama, please keep in mind that Hokage never brainwashed the Jinchuriki. Tisk. Tsunade couldn't be bothered to deal with this Umbu ninja. So, the child of Minato and Kushina, in order to cure the hidden illness of his newly recognized father, plans to leave Kanoha, bring his father to me, and ask for my help in treatment. Tsunade stroked her smooth chin. Quite a filial child, but he's obviously found the wrong person. I no longer deal with matters between ninjas. Um. The Umbu ninja interjected. Tsunade-sama, if Whitebeard really finds you, we hope you could. His last sentence was very low. But Tsunade's face darkened. Bang. The Umbu ninja who interrupted was directly smashed through the wall of the tavern. He flew out as fast as he could. Tsunade had already stood up. She glanced at another Umbu, who was sweating profusely. The disgust in her eyes was so deep that she didn't bother to hide it. Tell them to go as far away from me as possible. Pass my words back. The last Umbu ninja, still under pressure, reminded. Tsunade-sama, although you have decided not to interfere with ninja affairs, at the end of the day you are ultimately a ninja of Kanoha. Sometimes, please consider the bigger picture. Bang! The last Umbu ninja flew out faster than the previous one. He vomited blood in midair, and countless ribs in his chest were broken. Uh. Tsunade directly grabbed the wine bottle and poured several mouthfuls into her mouth. After finishing all the wine, the wine bottle was directly crushed by her. The anger in her heart was hard to suppress. Those corrupt elders have already damaged the village of Kanoha to this extent. Tsunade looked down at the scroll on the table. Let me trigger his hidden illness while treating Whitebeard, and let Whitebeard's death date advance. This kind of vicious way, only you can think of vicious ways like this. A bunch of old things, they have lived so long, they should go into the coffin and leave Kanoha. Tsunade snorted coldly, saying something that could be described as rebellious. Among so many people in Kanoha, 
There are probably no more than three people who dare to say this kind of thing openly. Tsunade is one of them. Speaking of which, why hasn't Shizen come back yet? Tsunade muttered. I just asked her to go back and bring some money, it's been five days already. If she didn't bring the money, I have to hurry up and leave this place, Tsunade in this remote small town casino, lost all her money. In fact, for a ninja of her level, as long as she casually takes a mission, even if it is just escorting a noble from one place to another, she can easily have a million Ryo. But Tsunade hasn't taken a ninja mission for many years, and she doesn't want to get involved in ninja disputes anymore. This leads to Tsunade's primary source of income comes from her disciple, Shizun. She depends on Shizun to handle ninja missions or return to Konoha to bring in some money. In her free time, she may also provide medical services to rich clients. In this way, she can increase Tsunade's gambling funds with additional resources to ensure her wagers are well back. I'll probably be there in one day. In the forest at night, Shizun was carrying a ceiling scroll and quickly passing through. She looked up through the dense branches and leaves and looked at the moon in the sky. Exhausted, she couldn't resist muttering to herself, Tsunade-sama, she's quite the enthusiast for the casino, no matter how her luck may go. As a result, Shizun becomes the victim of her gambling addiction. She couldn't help but feel a bit concerned. I hope Tsunade-sama won't visit the casino during my absence and end up with more debts thinking of this possibility. Shizun was almost numb. Huh? Suddenly, she landed on top of a big tree, her eyes looking at the blazing fire not far away. Is there a wildfire? This is not good. If there is a wildfire in the forest, many animals will definitely be burned to death. Shizun immediately rushed over. When she gradually approached the firelight, she said to a mini piggy on her neck, Tauntin, hold on tight. Then Shizun suddenly jumped up more than 10 meters high above the treetop. Both hands quickly formed an unfamiliar water escape technique. Water release. Water, huh? Her action stopped. She is a little confused because she found that the big ball of blazing flames in front of her was not a wildfire at all but a bonfire piled up by someone with wood. It's just that this bonfire is just a little bit bigger. She also saw a huge man next to the bonfire. It seemed that she felt something and looked up at her side. Oh no. Shizun instinctively hurriedly put her hand under her crotch to prevent herself from accidentally flashing in front of several strangers. Finally, she suddenly realized. She seems to be in midair. Eh. <clears throat> She fell down in an embarrassing posture. The huge bonfire was right below her. The imagined wildfire abruptly turned into a bonfire, surrounded by a circle of roasting wild boars and a burly giant. The scene before her eyes kept flipping. It made Shizun's brain freeze for a second. It also caused her body, which had jumped into midair, to fall down. By the time she reacted, she was less than four meters away from the bonfire below, and she was about to crash into a raging bonfire. Shizun was greatly alarmed. The piglet with its small hooves around her neck was even more frightened and pale. Especially the circle of roasted wild boars by the bonfire made it seem to see its own fate in the next second. Just as Shizun was thinking about what measures to take, she suddenly felt her falling trend abruptly stagnate. She could even feel her waist being clamped tightly like a vice. This. Did I get caught? Where did this little ninja come from? Whether it was a man or a woman, they all became little ninjas in Whitebeard's mouth. Sorry sorry. Shizun, who was pinched at the waist by Whitebeard's two fingers, quickly apologized. I thought this fire was a wildfire in the forest, so I wanted to come over and put it out. I, I didn't know this was a bonfire you raised, Mr. Giant, let alone that you were roasting meat here. Uh, wait. Shizun's reaction was delayed as she made a concerted effort to turn her gaze towards her own body. She saw a giant with a crescent beard. You, you, you. Shizun's memory was suddenly triggered, and her face was full of shock. Are you Whitebeard? A few days ago, because Tsunade lost a lot of money in the casino, unwilling to admit defeat, she asked her disciple Shizun to go back to Konoha to get money. She has no choice Shizun had to rush back to Konoha. When she returned to Konoha, she found out that so many big things had happened in Konoha during the previous period. And she also saw the bounty on Whitebeard. It was a bounty that only belonged to the internal part of Konoha. Lower-level ninjas in Konoha didn't even have the authority to know about this bounty. Only because Shizun is Tsunade's direct disciple, otherwise she wouldn't have the authority to know about Whitebeard's bounty. Shizun sighed at that time, even the Hokage is not an opponent of this giant. She thought she would not encounter such a dangerous person. After all, she has no intersection with giants, but who would have thought that on her way back to find Tsunade, she ran into this giant, Whitebeard who defeated the third Hokage. This this this. How could it be such a coincidence? Gururarara. 
Whitebeard pinched Shizun and turned his wrist to twist her over. The eyes of both sides met in midair. Whitebeard tutade, you unknown little ninja, since you recognize me, then you must have seen me in Kanoha village. No no, ah uh, ah uh, no it's not like that. Shizun realized that her speech was a bit contradictory. She hurriedly explained, I saw your photo in the internal bounty order of Kanoha. The technology of the ninja world is very crooked. It usually looks like there is no technology tree, but in fact, things like computers and cameras are available. Whitebeard didn't take any special photos in Kanoha village. It must have been the Umbu ninja who secretly took his photos, but Whitebeard is obviously more interested in bounties. Oh, bounty? Whitebeard casually threw Shizen down. Shizen was caught off guard and almost fell into a dog-eating shit posture. Fortunately, she was also a formidable ninja. She quickly steadied herself and landed firmly on the ground. Whitebeard, sitting cross-legged on the ground, said with interest, Gura Arara, I didn't expect to be wanted by the navy on the sea and by the Kanahagakur village in the ninja world. Today, I am a pirate with two bounties on my head, Gura Arara, ninja brat. Whitebeard teased, so you came after me for my bounty. But after I discovered you, you started making lame excuses. Ah, you, you misunderstood. Shizen was startled. How dare she take on such an S-level bounty? She hurriedly explained, I was just passing by. I didn't intend to take your bounty. Whitebeard could feel it. Shizen was not lying. Tell me, how much bounty did the Kanoha village offer for me? Whitebeard knew that the ninja world did not use belly, but Rio banknote. 50 million Rio bounty. Shizen weakly uttered a number she thought was extremely exaggerated. You know, the amount of money Lady Tsunade lost at the casino last year was just this much. She thought that a bounty comparable to Lady Tsunade's losses was an absurdly exaggerated amount. 50 million Rio? Kakashi, who was resting under a tree, opened one dead fish eye with a hint of surprise in his eyes. Kakashi remembered very clearly that Asuma Saratobi, the son of the third Hokage, had a bounty of only 35 million Rio. That's 15 million Rio higher than the son of the Hokage, and this is his first bounty. Kakashi was quite surprised. Those higher-ups are really willing to spend money. 50 million Rio is not a small number. His voice attracted Shizun's attention. White hedgehog hair plus black mask plus forehead protector covering eyes. Those three characteristic. Too obvious. You you are. Shizun was stunned. Even though she spent most of her time with Lady Tsunade and rarely returned to Kanoha village, she knew some of the influential figures in Kanoha village. You are copy ninja Hataki Kakashi? She exclaimed in shock. 50 million Rio. Naruto's voice started to babble. How many ramen bowls can I eat at a Chiraka ramen? He started calculating with his fingers. The more he calculated, the more dizzy he became. Kakashi explained to this math idiot. 50 million Rio can already buy a Chiraka ramen shop. The protection fee that the nobleman of the previous town gave to Mr. Whitebeard was only worth 10 million Rio. So much. Naruto was dumbfounded. Speaking of specific numbers, five-year-old Naruto didn't have much concept. But if he could buy a Chiraka ramen shop, he immediately realized that it was an astronomical number, Kakashi said. Fortunately, this is an internal bounty from Kanoha Village and has not been announced to the public. Otherwise, such a large bounty would attract many bounty hunters. Among those bounty hunters in the ninja world, it is said that there is a very powerful guy. At this time, Kakashi suddenly noticed that Whitebeard's expression had become somewhat wrong. The next moment, only heard Whitebeard say something that made everyone except Naruto dumbfounded. A mere 50 million Rio bounty. Is your broken Kanahagakur village looking down on me? It's far behind compared to the Navy headquarters bounty. As his words fell, just a trace of Whitebeard's aura leaked out, and it already made Kakashi and Shizen feel tremendous pressure. 50 million Rio. It's so little. I know this. I know this. Naruto shouted. Pops told me that he had a shocking bounty when he was at sea. Uh. Naruto scratched his head awkwardly. But how much exactly? Pop seems to have not told me. Gura Arara. Whitebeard laughed heartily. He even said something shocking. Foolish son. The amount of bounty your pops once had from the navy was a whopping 5.046.000.000 belly. Naruto didn't have a deep understanding of how huge this number was. But Kakashi and Shizun were stunned. How? How much? A bounty of 5.046.000.000 belly the impact it had on Kakashi and Shizun was no less than a mind-disturbing illusion. They were all stunned. What an astonishing number. Even the extra 46 million at the end is more than Saratobi Asuma's bounty. Shizun didn't know much about Whitebeard, 
but Kakashi felt that he should know Whitebeard quite well. Kakashi was very clear. A man as bold and domineering as Whitebeard would not boast about this, nor would he joke about it. This astonishing bounty. It's real. But the next second, he fell into doubt. Why had he never heard of it? If someone has a bounty of over 5 billion, even in the ninja world, it would be famous, right? I can't figure it out. 5.046 billion. If all of it is real money, how many years can Tsunade-sama lose? Shizen murmured in shock. But the next second, she noticed that the atmosphere was a bit wrong. She found that all three of them were looking at her. Whether it was Whitebeard, Kakashi, or Naruto, their eyes were all on Shizen. It made Shizen tense up. What, what's wrong? She hugged Tauntin in her arms and looked at these three people anxiously. Especially among these three people, she found that she was the only girl. Oh, nothing strange should happen, right? You said Tsunade? You said the name Tsunade, didn't you? The five-year-old Naruto was more excited than anyone else at this moment. He no longer coveted the wild boar that was about to be roasted. Instead, he took two steps and rushed directly to Shizuka's side. He quickly grabbed Shizen's clothes, grabbed tightly, as if he didn't want Shizen to leave. Yes, yes. Shizen was a bit dazed. She looked down at Naruto. Little brother, what? What happened to Tsunade-sama? She rarely returned to Konoha and only heard rumors about the Nine Tails in Konoha. But she didn't know that Naruto was the Nine Tails. The bounty order for Whitebeard in Konoha Village did not mention Jinchuriki being taken away by Whitebeard. So she didn't recognize Naruto. She just felt that this little boy with yellow hair had strong hand strength. If he used a little more force her clothes would be torn apart by him. Uh, wait. Tsunade-sama is naturally blonde. And this little brother in front of her also has yellow hair. And this little brother became so excited when he heard the name of Tsunade-sama. Is there any blood relationship between these two? Shizen's eyes gradually widened. In just a few seconds, she made up a melodramatic drama in her mind. Anyway, it was that Tsunade-sama abandoned her biological son from beginning to end. Then, her biological son searched for Tsunade-sama all over the land of fire. We're looking for her. The words Naruto said made Shizen gasp for air even more. Looking at the excitement and anticipation on Naruto's little face, Shizen softened her heart a bit. She had a touch of sympathy for Naruto in her eyes and some annoyance at Tsunadesima. After squatting down and rubbing Naruto's hair, little brother, maybe Tsunadesima has her difficulties? Huh? What are you talking about? Naruto blinked his eyes. He hurriedly said to Shizen, the reason we're looking for Tsunade is because she's the best medical ninja in the Kanoha village. I want her to help to cure my pop's illness. Naruto quickly ran to the side, grabbed a few gold bars, and hurried back. He said, Grandpa Hokage told me that medical treatment costs money. I don't know if this money is enough. If, if it's not enough. Naruto pondered and had a bright idea. If it's not enough, I'll pay the rest when I become Hokage. Shizen, ah? Is that so? So, it's not what she thought? Not good. She misunderstood Tsunade-sama. I heard that Tsunade-sama took a disciple outside. You wouldn't happen to be her disciple, would you? Kakashi looked at Shizen curiously sizing up this girl who was about his age. Yes. Shizen nodded repeatedly. My name is Kato Shizen, from the Kanoha village. Auntie, you are Tsunade's disciple. So does that mean? Naruto immediately said, You're also a very powerful medical ninja? Auntie? Shizen, who has always had a good temper, had her eyes wide open at this moment. But Naruto's words made her feel embarrassed. Shizen scratched her head awkwardly and quickly modestly said, Although I am Tsunade-sama's disciple, my medical ninjutsu level is far behind Tsunade-sama. Auntie ninja can you check my pop's body? Naruto brought the gold bars to Shizen. I will pay. Ah, uh, no need no need. Although Shizen was very concerned about the title of auntie, Naruto's politeness made her quite at a loss. Several gold bars shone brightly in the firelight. Who gives gold bars for medical treatment fee? Shizen said, I'm not sure if I can figure out the reason, but I might try. In fact, Shizen didn't care much about Whitebeard's, Kanoha Village wanted status. She had been following Tsunade for many years and had no feelings for Kanoha Village. Whitebeard-sama Shizen took a deep breath. She couldn't help but swallow. Whitebeard's huge figure still gave her quite a bit of pressure. Why don't you lie flat on the ground? Her palm was already wrapped in chakra and weakly suggested. Gurarara. Whitebeard didn't care and lay down on the ground. The huge stone more than a meter high behind him was crushed by him without feeling anything. Shizen was dumbfounded. Shizen carefully walked over to Whitebeard. The palm of her hand wrapped in chakra gently pressed on Whitebeard's skin. 
She closed her eyes and carefully sensed Whitebeard's internal condition. Her palm was like a very precise detection instrument, slowly moving over every inch of Whitebeard's skin, occasionally touching an amazing scar, made Shizun quite surprised, and her expression began to become more and more serious. The unprecedented situation made Shizun take a deep breath. She opened her eyes and said, Whitebeard Sama, your body condition has deteriorated to a very 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 serious level. Three very represent Shizun's shock. She didn't know how Whitebeard managed to live until now. But I can try. Shizun put both hands on what she thought was a fatal hidden injury. That was very close to Whitebeard's chest position. A large amount of chakra poured into Whitebeard's body. Stimulating old cells. Shizun believes that facing Whitebeard's situation requires extremely delicate chakra control. Otherwise, if she is not careful, it will not only be ineffective in treatment but may also cause damage. In just a few minutes, Shizun's face was turning pale. Sweat was dripping from her forehead. Phew! She held on for a while, and like a deflated balloon, she sat on the ground and exhaled heavily. Whitebeard Sama is so big that the chakra needed is dozens of times that of ordinary people. At this time, Whitebeard also sat up from the ground. He was feeling the place that Shizun had healed. He stood up, his face showing a very cheerful smile. The visible conqueror's hockey suddenly burst out from him, sweeping across all directions. The air was filled with black lightning. The entire forest seemed to have been swept by a gale. The consciousness of the beasts in the forest was hit by a heavy hammer. All of them foamed at the mouth and rolled their eyes in surprise, falling to the ground motionless. They were stunned. The conqueror's hockey that rose to the sky even shattered the clouds above, making the moon in the sky more conspicuous. At last, there is no discomfort upon releasing conqueror's hockey. Is this person a disciple of Tsunade? Gururarara. If Whitebeard's peak physical condition is 100%, then before being treated by Shizun, his physical condition was only about 20%, and after being treated by Shizun, his physical condition went straight to 30%. It's like being several years younger. Very refreshing. What, what's going on? Shizun, who was sitting paralyzed on the ground, only felt a gust of wind erupting from Whitebeard. Then, an incredibly terrifying sense of oppression enveloped her heart. Even though Whitebeard's control over his conqueror's hockey was already perfect, such a level of conqueror's hockey explosion still made Shizun, Kakashi, and Naruto tremble with fear. Kakashi and Shizun, the two ninjas, were okay. But Naruto felt the greatest impact. Naruto felt his brain buzz. Everything around him became unusually quiet, so quiet that he couldn't even hear his own heartbeat. His brain consciousness was also blank. Although he wasn't stunned, after all, Whitebeard could control his conqueror's hockey. But Naruto's overall consciousness was still very confused. Like being drunk, stumbling very uncomfortable, Kakashi's forehead broke out in a few cold sweats. Is this momentum? Can a simple burst of momentum achieve this level? Even a tailed beast can't do it, right? The next day, early morning, the huge bonfire in the forest had been extinguished, and next to the bonfire was a pile of wild boar skeletons. Those dozens of wild boars were eaten last night until only white bones were left. Gururarara. Whitebeard laughed loudly. He looked down at Shizun next to him. Shizun brat, are you sure you don't want to be my child? My ship is short of an experienced ship doctor. Whitebeard Sama, my parents and uncle died on the battlefield, and I am indeed an orphan. Shizun yearned to shed tears, but they eluded her. But at this moment, I truly have no desire to accept another person as my father. She didn't expect Whitebeard to have this strange hobby. It looks just like Tsunade Sama's gambling addiction. But, this hobby seems to be better than Lady Tsunade's gambling addiction. At least he doesn't lose so much money every day. Shizun changed the subject. Whitebeard Sama, my medical ninjutsu level is definitely not as good as Tsunade Sama's. I estimate it is very difficult to completely cure your hidden illness. Even if I treat you every day, there is no way to recover you. Unless, it is Tsunadesama who takes action personally. Tsunade Sama's medical ninjutsu is really powerful. Shizun didn't hesitate to sell Tsunade. She took Whitebeard and others and went straight to where Tsunade was. The key is that she has to give money to Tsunade-sama. And Whitebeard and others know that Shizun is Tsunade's disciple. They will definitely follow her behind. If Shizun travels alone at her speed, she will be able to find Tsunade in less than a day. However, there is a Naruto in the group. Whitebeard's devilish special training for Naruto is still ongoing. Whitebeard trains Naruto like he wants to kill his son during the day, and Kakashi is forced to patiently teach Naruto ninjutsu at night. This training significantly delayed their journey. 
After all, Naruto, who carries hundreds of kg of weight all day long, is just a five-year-old child. The travel speed is exceedingly slow. On the way, Shizun occasionally glanced at Naruto. She felt that both Mr. Whitebeard and this yellow-haired boy were somewhat beyond her understanding of human limit. Whitebeard-sama can be barely explained as he is a giant, and not quite like ordinary humans. How does this child named Naruto endure such terrifying special training with his small body? And he hasn't even endured torment to the point of death. Shizun is astonished. She can't help but look at Kakashi, the renowned copy ninja, not quite understanding why Kakashi would be with Whitebeard. After all, Whitebeard is a wanted criminal of Kanoha. Kakashi, as a ninja of Kanoha, can actually get along harmoniously with a man who has a bounty of 50 million Ryo from Kanoha. Shizun is puzzled, but it's not easy to ask. Time passes. Their group has once again traveled for a full four days, until a dusty and travel-worn Shizun finally sees the familiar remote town and she finally shows a smile. Finally, I'm back. But she's a bit worried. I hope Lady Tsunade hasn't been waiting impatiently. In fact, what she's more worried about is that during her absence, Lady Tsunade has gone to borrow money at high interest rates again. This possibility is very high. Has Tsunade-sama been here all along? Kakashi, holding an Eki book, slightly lifts his dead fish eyes to look ahead. Yes. Shizun nods. Tsunade-sama has been in this small town for more than a month. She didn't say something. It's really embarrassing. Actually, Tsunade-sama has been gambling here for more than a month and lost all the hard-earned millions of Ryo. This is still under Shizun's constant urging for Tsunade to gamble less. Otherwise, those millions of Ryo might not be enough for Tsunade to gamble for one day. Tsunade-sama should be in the town? Shizun hadn't finished her sentence when there was a commotion in the distance. You could faintly hear a group of people roaring in frustration. Hurry, you two go left, you two go right, the rest of you follow me, damn it. She owed us substantial loans with high interest and didn't want to pay. Do ninjas hold any exceptions? Even if they're from Kanoha, they must settle their debts with us. Big brother, come here. I just saw that woman running in this direction. Quick, chase. Then Whitebeard and the others saw a group of people rushing over. They were dressed like hired samurai, each holding a sharp samurai sword. They were looking everywhere on the road and by the street. It seemed they were looking for someone. Hey, kid. One of the samurai grabbed the back collar of a little girl on the side of the road and lifted her up directly, asking fiercely, Have you seen a woman with a big chest running this way? The little girl was scared and cried out on the spot. Her trembling hand pointed to an alley next to her. Over there, the samurai threw the little girl away. He shouted at the people around him, Come here, over here, chase her, don't let her run away. A group of samurai rushed over in droves. But they didn't notice that the little girl who was thrown down had her crying face and suddenly ran away, and revealed a sly smile. Do you really think you can catch me like this? Tsunade, who had transformed into a little girl, chuckled. But when she thought of something, she got very annoyed. Hmph. Those folks at the casino must be cheating. Otherwise, how could I keep losing and never win? Suddenly, Tsunade felt something, and she noticed that the sun above her head was blocked by something. A large half of the street was shrouded in shadow. Tsunade also noticed that some pedestrians on the side of the road were looking at her back with extremely terrified eyes. Hmm. Tsunade turned around and looked back. She was taken aback for a moment. Throughout the years, Tsunade has been away from Kanoha, wandering within the borders of the fire country. She has seen many tall individuals, even those suffering from gigantism who stand three meters high. However, an imposing figure like Whitebeard, standing at over six meters, she had never seen it before. His massive and robust physique seemed to contain a power capable of destroying heaven and earth. The outrageously large Naginata gleamed coldly under the sunlight. The ferocious scars on his chest were shocking to behold. This was a formidable fellow, Edward Newgate. At first, Tsunade seemed small, like a five-year-old child, as she gazed up at the white beard before her. She uttered this name. A few days ago, two reckless Umbu from Kanoha came running over, delivering information about Whitebeard to her. This included Whitebeard's real name. Tsunade was informed that such a troublesome character existed in the Land of Fire. And moreover, this troublesome character was looking for her. Just like the description in the report, Tsunade's small face tightened slightly. She saw Whitebeard walking towards her, but she no longer wanted to get involved in ninja affairs. Just as she was about to turn around and slip away pretending to be a little girl, her eyes suddenly widened. She recognized someone familiar. Shizun? Tsunade noticed Shizun, 
her disciple whom she had always exploited. At this moment, Shizun was nervously holding Tantan, the piglet, with an awkward expression on her face, standing on Whitebeard's right side. She also saw a white-haired ninja next to Whitebeard. The hedgehog-like white hair reminded her of Hitaki Sakumo. Is this Sakumo's son, Kakashi? Tsunade immediately recalled him. Finally, Tsunade looked at Naruto. Naruto's face made her pupils shrink. Countless memories were instantly triggered. The name Nawaki almost slipped out of her mind. Too similar. How could he look so similar? So that blonde kid must be the child of Namike's Minato and Uzumaki Kushina, the Jinchuriki of Kanoha. Tsunade took a deep breath and finally managed to calm her thoughts and separate Naruto from Minato in her mind. At this moment she knew she couldn't hide anymore. Others might not recognize her childhood appearance, but that idiot disciple Shizen would definitely recognize her. Then she would be exposed, as expected. I saw you once when I was a child when you returned to Kanoa, Tsunade-sama. Kakashi was the first to greet Tsunade politely, Tsunade-sama. Shizen's voice was weak and lacked confidence. I met Whitebeard-sama on my way back to find you. Tsunade. Bang. With a puff of smoke erupting from Tsunade's body, when the smoke dissipated, Tsunade's true form was revealed. Returning to a height of 163.1 centimeters, and her voluptuous figure returned as well. Naruto was stunned by this scene, she, she turned from a cute girl into an auntie, huh, hey, kid, what are you saying? Tsunade instantly exploded with anger, glaring at Naruto with eyes that seemed ready to spit fire, but when her gaze inadvertently swept over Whitebeard, Tsunade temporarily suppressed her anger, a giant, honestly, Tsunade was very curious about how Whitebeard grew so tall, even more curious about what Whitebeard's body structure looked like? This might be a common problem for every medical ninja. But, I know why you're looking for me, Tsunade said. I won't get involved in ninja conflicts, and I won't treat ninjas. You should go back to where you came from. Why? Naruto was stunned. He didn't expect to travel all the way from Kanoha to here only to receive such a response. Tsunade waved her hand, her face expressionless, there's not much to it. I'm just tired of the cruel game of ninjas. But, but you're a medical ninja, Naruto exclaimed. The Grandpa Hokage said that the duty of a medical ninja is to help patients. That old man lied to you, Tsunade said casually. Naruto was so anxious to look around. Suddenly, he thought of something. He quickly took off his coat, revealing a large amount of exaggerated weights tied to his body. I, I can pay. Naruto fumbled to untie the knots on his body. Stacks of banknotes and gold bars fell to the ground. This is not about money. Huh. Tsunade glanced at Naruto casually, and just this glance made her unable to look away. The glittering gold bars and stacks of banknotes left her stunned. As a well-known big fat sheep in the ninja world, Tsunade could tell at a glance that those stacks of notes were worth at least three or four million tails. Those gold bars were even more exaggerated. Although they didn't look particularly numerous, they were gold. If sold in a gold shop, they could be exchanged for at least several million Rio, adding up to tens of millions of Rio. Where did such a young Jinchuriki get so much money? Tsunade's eyes were wide open. Stinky brat. But Tsunade still stubbornly held her ground. You think this amount of money can buy one of the Sanin of Kanoha? Sanin was not a good term for Tsunade. When she said this word, it was with a self-mocking tone. Snap, the banknotes in Naruto's hand fell to the ground. For him at this age, Tsunade's strong attitude left him at a loss for what to do. If you, if you don't treat pops, tears welled up in Naruto's eyes. He sniffled hard, and his voice choked up as he spoke. Pops, he might. He might leave me in three years. Pops is my only family. Kid, playing the emotional card won't work on me. Tsunade turned her head away, choosing not to look at Naruto. She was afraid that a little brat who looked like Minato would talk to her with that pitiful expression and make her soften up. Tsunade said, as long as it's about ninjas, I don't want to get involved now. Shizen. Seeing Shizen wanting to say something, Tsunade raised her hand and interrupted in advance. You don't need to persuade me either. Shizen uttered a no. She lowered her head in silent disappointment. Tsunade-sama, if the person seeking help is not a ninja, would you lend a hand? Kakashi suddenly asked. Tsunade replied casually. If there's money involved, over these years, she hasn't taken any ninja missions. Her gambling funds either came from eating into her old savings or borrowing high-interest loans or freeloading Shizen. If there was really no other way, she would also return to her old profession and help those rich nobles treat their illnesses. Upon recovery, she would receive a significant sum of money, which could then be used for gambling again. 
Kakashi's mouth hidden under the black mask curled up. It's quite coincidental that Whitebeard-sama is not a ninja. Tsunade-sama should not refuse a non-ninja person who comes to seek medical help from you, a medical ninja with superb ninjutsu skills. Tsunade couldn't hold back and laughed. You mean that someone who is not a ninja defeated the third Hokage? And now that old man is still lying in the hospital? Kakashi nodded. If the person Tsunade-sama is referring to is really the third Hokage, then indeed it is so. Tsunade. Although she had been away from Kanoha for many years and hadn't seen the old man for many years. But since that old man is still Hokage now, how could he be weakened enough to be defeated by someone who is not a ninja? Your lying skill is so bad. After shaking her head, Tsunade pointed out a chakra energy band from her fingertips. I am a medical ninja. Your clumsy lie can be exposed on the spot with just one check. When her chakra touched Whitebeard's wrist, Tsunade was stunned on the spot. Her eyes got bigger and bigger. Hmm? She looked up at Whitebeard in astonishment, one of the Sanin of Kanoha, with a dumbfounded expression. Cells completely without chakra? How is that possible? Are you still human? Are you, an alien? Tsunade, who had studied medical theory for most of her life. At this moment, she was hit by an unprecedented shock. As we all know, even if people are not ninjas, the cells of humans in the ninja world all carry chakra to varying degrees. This is considered common knowledge in the ninja world. For this reason, Tsunade, who noticed that there was absolutely no chakra fluctuation in Whitebeard's body, was shocked. She thought Whitebeard was an alien. Gurerarara. Whitebeard looked down at Tsunade with hollow eyes and laughed loudly. I am a pirate on the sea, not a ninja with chakra. Even if you're a pirate, you're still a human. It's impossible for you to have no chakra in your body. Tsunade felt her mind was a bit confused. She felt her understanding of the human body. At this moment, it shattered. Tsunade-sama, I really didn't lie to you. Kakashi was holding a yellow book, but his tone was honest. Whitebeard is very special. He not only doesn't have chakra, but his Kekiai Genkai also doesn't need chakra as energy. Tsunade. She had lived for so many years, and this was the first time she had encountered such a situation. She also never expected that Whitebeard was really not a ninja. If she were to treat such a man, would it be considered getting involved in ninja affairs? If it's not considered, Whitebeard took away the Jinchuriki and has been entangled with the ninjas of Kanoha village. If it is considered, Whitebeard without chakra might not even know ninjutsu. What kind of ninja is he? Tsunade fell silent, until the commotion behind her interrupted her thoughts. Damn it, that little brat just tricked us. There's no big fat sheep from Kanoha over there. That woman must have run away, damn it. She owes us a lot of money. Big brother, if the boss finds out we didn't get the debt back, we might get a finger chopped off by the boss. Nonsense. You think I don't know? Not good. Tsunade looked shocked. As one of the three ninjas of Kanoha, she could easily deal with these samurais who were asking her for debt. But she didn't do that. Instead, she hurriedly used the transformation technique. With a bang sound, the magnificent figure turned flat. She turned into a 13-year-old girl and showed an innocent expression. As if she wasn't the one who owed money. Coincidentally, the group of samurais who were asking for debt also turned their eyes in this direction. Their eyes gradually widened, and all their gazes focused on Whitebeard. The 6.66 meter tall Whitebeard. Too eye-catching. Suddenly, Naruto shouted out, Hey! The person you're looking for, she's a mum um Tsunade was startled and quickly covered Naruto's mouth. She gritted her teeth and lowered her voice. What are you doing, you little brat? I owe them millions of Rio. If they find out, where am I going to get the money to pay off this high-interest loan? Um, if you treat pops, um, I won't say anything. Naruto's mouth was covered, forcing him to mumble his words. Are you blackmailing me? Tsunade's beautiful eyes widened. Where did you learn this from? Is that how your father teaches you kids? Shizen's dull voice interjected. Tsunade-sama, did you borrow a high-interest loan? Ah, uh, ah ha ha ha. Tsunade laughed awkwardly and then immediately blamed the casino. It's all because those people cheated. Otherwise, I wouldn't have lost. It's still millions of Rio. Shizen's eyes were full of resentment. Cough. Tsunade was increasingly short of breath. I'm not saying I can't win it back. Just give me some money and I can win it back. Tsunade-sama, I only brought a few hundred thousand Rio this time. Shizen's tone was like a deeply wronged woman. Unless this money can be multiplied by ten, there's no way to help you pay off the high-interest loan. All right, all right. Tsunade let go of Naruto's mouth and raised her hand in surrender. Stop nagging. She sneakily glanced at the group of samurai behind her. 
seeing that the samurai seemed to be scared off by Whitebeard's giant figure and left this place of trouble. Tsunade breathed a sigh of relief. She pondered for a moment. Little brat, stop crying. Tsunade began to speak. Under normal circumstances, I won't personally perform medical treatment. I will let my disciple, Shizun, be the main surgeon. I will only give her reminders and advice on the side. She silently estimated the value of those banknotes and gold bars. She resisted the urge to let her eyes shine. Tsunade reluctantly said, I'm actually quite kind-hearted. The treatment fee is only 10 million Rio. You pay in advance that if it doesn't work out, no refund, if we killed him, no refund either. In fact, when she confirmed that Whitebeard was not a ninja, Tsunade no longer had any resistance in her heart. And she also had a bit of selfishness mixed in. A few days ago, two Umbu ninjas came to deliver a few words to her that made Tsunade feel sick. Those old guys who made Kanoha a mess wanted her to do something to Whitebeard? It's likely that Whitebeard is causing them a significant problem. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in such a hurry to remove him. This disgusting behavior made Tsunade very rebellious. A bunch of shameless old men wanted her to do that. Then, she would do just the opposite. Looking at Naruto, who was excitedly wiping away his tears, Tsunade, in a daze, didn't know why the face of her late brother Nawaki suddenly appeared before her eyes. Nawaki's face and Naruto's face. They overlapped each other. Perfectly aligned. He really looks like... Tsunade instinctively murmured. Huh. Naruto was taken aback, nothing. Tsunade instantly came to her senses. She said, I agree to treat your pops, but in addition to the 10 million Rio treatment fee, there is an additional condition. She grabbed Naruto's face and twisted it hard. That is, you little brat are not allowed to call me auntie. If you dare to call me that again, I will strip your pants off and flick your undeveloped bird until it swells. Ouch. It hurts. Tsunade was very decisive. After she agreed to treat Whitebeard, she did not delay until the next day. She took Whitebeard and others to an open suburb near the town. There was no one else here besides them. The reason for coming to this place was mainly because Whitebeard's body was too large, and he couldn't get into the local hospital. At this time, some special methods had to be taken. You make a mud house with earth release. Make it bigger so that Whitebeard can lie down inside. Then put a fire release inside to burn it into a nearly sterile state. When Tsunade ordered Kakashi, she was very skilled. Kakashi helplessly put away the Aika Aika Paradise book. He was forced to accept the fate of being a tool man. Shizun, Tsunade took a deep breath. She said, you know what to do later. Hmm. Shizun, holding Tantan, obediently nodded her head. Shizun knew very well that Tsunade-sama actually had hemophobia. If there's a need to see blood, her disciple will have to take action. In the outskirts of the wilderness, a massive earthen house stands abruptly. The house is riddled with cracks, clearly scorched by intense flames. At this moment, Whitebeard lies quietly within. His weapon, Mirakumajiri, is placed outside. Placed up next to the earthen house, Tsunade and Shizun are also inside. They are both dressed in white lab coats and wearing sterile masks. These were taken out from the ceiling scroll. The techniques of the shinobi world are quite convenient. Lord Whitebeard, when dealing with Whitebeard, who's not a ninja but can give a hard time for the upper echelons of Kanoha village, has a son who looks like Nawaki, and is wealthy, Tsunade adds an honorific when she speaks. Tsunade withdrew her hand, her beautiful eyebrows tightly furrowed. Your condition is terrible, unprecedentedly terrible. She had treated many severely injured people on the battlefield in her time, even though she has completely given up now. But to gather gambling funds, she would still treat some rich people. She has encountered many difficult and complicated diseases. What kind of patient hasn't she seen? But, like Whitebeard, who has one hidden disease after another accumulating in his body, it's her first time seeing this. In fact, when she walked into this temporary operating room, her disciple Shizun had already warned her that Whitebeard's condition was very serious. However, the previous Tsunade seemed somewhat skeptical about it. How serious could it be? After all, from the surface, Whitebeard's condition seems very healthy, just a bit old. It wasn't until she personally examined him carefully that she found Shizun was absolutely right. I guess it might be because your physical strength is extraordinary. Tsunade said in an astonished tone, the hidden diseases in your body, if distributed to 100 people, those 100 people would definitely not survive tonight. But you have held on. Gururara. This might also have something to do with my foolish son. Whitebeard laughed indifferently. Even if the doctors of the Kanoha village and the master disciple duo of Shizun and Tsunade say how dangerous it is, Whitebeard is not worried. Even if he was immediately given a critical illness notice telling him that he would die tomorrow, 
Whitebeard would not have any worries. Is it Naruto? Tsunade was taken aback. She suddenly thought of the Nine Tails Chakra. If Naruto could use the Nine Tails Chakra, perhaps he could indeed save Whitebeard's life? It's Marco. Whitebeard laughed. Marco, this unfamiliar name made Tsunade puzzled. Is this also a very powerful medical ninja? If so, then Tsunade thinks that his medical skills might not be inferior to her or only slightly worse than her. Huh. She took a deep breath and felt some pressure in her heart. She voiced the source of her pressure. Lord Whitebeard, your condition requires anesthesia and surgery. No need for anesthesia, Whitebeard said. Just do it already. Huh. Before Tsunade could say anything else, Shizen was stunned. Shizen exclaimed, You don't need anesthesia? Gururarara. Whitebeard laughed heartily, his laughter even reaching outside the earthen house. Those who need anesthesia just for a few cuts are not worthy of sailing in the sea. Men of the sea, do not fear death. Tsunade and Shizen fell silent together. They had to admit, the charismatic figure of Whitebeard before them exuded a one-of-a-kind charm. It's no surprise that even Naruto, the Jinchuriki of Kanoha, recognizes Whitebeard as his father. Shizen, Tsunade said, prepare for the surgery. Okay. Shizen quickly nodded. Then, Tsunade took out a cloth bag and blindfolded herself, continuing to say, During the surgery, you must tell me all the details. Okay. Shizen nodded again. At the same time, blindfolded Tsunade with chakra, made a cut on her thumb. Ninjutsu summoning Jutsu. Uncle Kakashi, is that Tsunade? Big sister really good at medical ninjutsu? At this time, Naruto was becoming more and more worried. He was helping to hold Shizen's pig, Tauntin. His little face was full of worry and struggle. Believe in Tsunade-sama, Kakashi said. It is said that during the ninja war, Tsunadesama cured many wounded who had been declared dead. And, I also heard that Tsunade-sama's summoning beast is the slug sage of the three great sacred grounds. Kakashi continued, it's a very powerful summoning beast, compared to Naruto's worry. Kakashi believed in Tsunade, but he didn't know why. Kakashi found that he was also a little worried. He didn't know where this emotion came from. Was he worried about Whitebeard? Or because he felt that he owed Naruto, so he was worried about Naruto's family? Kakashi was startled by his own thoughts. He thought about it and felt that it tended to be the latter. After all, if it were the former, wouldn't that mean he was actually subdued by Whitebeard's personal charm? What a joke. Uncle Kakashi. Naruto suddenly exclaimed anxiously. Blood. A lot of blood is flowing out. Then, a crack was opened in the temporary operating room and blood flowed out like water from inside. Until the blood no longer gushed out, the small crack was closed again by someone inside. Whitebeard's body was too large, and the blood flowing out of the surgery was simply dozens of times that of ordinary people. It's okay, Naruto, Kakashi said uncertainly. Bleeding during surgery is common sense. In fact, while comforting Naruto, Kakashi himself was also sweating in his palms. He found that he was really worried about whether the surgery would go smoothly. How could this be? In Kakashi's mind, he unconsciously recalled Whitebeard's various indulgences towards Naruto. That meticulous and unique paternal love was always caught by him as an observer. Those scenes of memories from an observer's perspective. Kakashi was unexpectedly filled with envy. The figure of his father, Hataki Sakumo, seemed to overlap with that of Whitebeard. Kakashi broke out in a cold sweat from fear. He slapped himself. Smack, smack, smack. Uncle Kakashi, why why are you hitting yourself? Naruto looked up and saw Kakashi's unusual behavior. Kakashi was silent for a few seconds, then made an excuse. There's a mosquito. Uncle Kakashi, it seems like you're lying. Naruto bluntly exposed him. Kakashi, was his acting and lying skills too poor? Or was Naruto's intuition too accurate? This unprecedented surgery actually lasted from 1 o'clock in the afternoon until 5 o'clock in the evening. A full four hours. Bang! until the door of the temporary operating room was violently kicked open. The first to rush out was Tsunade. Tsunade-sama, how is Whitebeard? Just as Kakashi was about to ask something, he noticed that Tsunade's condition seemed a bit off. Then, Tsunade quickly took off her mask, completely unwilling to look back at the situation inside. Her face was paler than anyone else's. Her whole body was uncontrollably trembling slightly. She was wiping her hands very hard, trying to clean the few drops of blood that had stained them. I accidentally saw blood. Tsunade's voice was trembling, completely out of control. Tsunade finally breathed a sigh of relief after painstakingly wiping the blood off her hands. She found herself drenched in cold sweat. 
as if she had just been fished out of the water. This is one of the reasons why she is reluctant to participate in ninja affairs. Hemophobia, severe enough to evoke her greatest inner fear, makes it impossible for Tsunade to fight like a ninja anymore. Even more unable to personally treat ninjas, every time she treats someone, she can only close her eyes and direct her disciple, allowing Shizun to perform the surgery. Today is no different, but when she looked forward, she found that the ground in front of her was soaked red with blood. Tsunade's pupils suddenly contracted. Her eyes were trembling. Soon, Shizun also walked out of the temporary operating room. Her condition wasn't much better than Tsunade's. Tsunade was scared by hemophobia, while Shizun was tired. A four-hour-long surgery drained Shizun's chakra. Her complexion was even paler than Tsunade's. She was weak when she walked, looking a bit shaky. But Shizun still held on, showed a smile to Naruto and Kakashi, and then said to them, The surgery went smoothly, all wounds have been stitched up, crack. The temporarily built operating room suddenly shattered with a loud noise. The figure of Whitebeard slowly standing up emerged from the dust and smoke. When the dust gradually dispersed, Whitebeard, bathed in blood, looked like an Azura walking out of hell. Extremely scary. Gururarara. Whitebeard's hearty laughter was as usual. If it weren't for the fact that he had a lot of blood on him and a huge scar stitched up on his chest, I'm afraid no one would think that he had just undergone surgery. With the sudden activation of the Quake Quake fruit power, all the blood on his body was shaken off, restoring his usual cleanliness. Whitebeard grabbed his white cloak and put it back on himself again. He glanced at Tsunade, who was kneeling and trembling on the ground. Whitebeard could already tell that this little kid named Tsunade was very afraid of blood. Pops! At this moment, Naruto had already run over excitedly. He tightly grabbed Whitebeard's trouser leg. Pops are you okay? You've lost so much blood. Naruto looked up at Whitebeard's stitched wound from surgery. Suddenly, he was shocked and exclaimed, Oh no Pops, you're bleeding there. Smack! Whitebeard gave Naruto a fist of love. Foolish son, have you never been injured or had surgery? Whitebeard said, isn't it normal for a freshly stitched wound to seep a little blood? For a man of the sea, this amount of blood is just like sweating a bit. Whitebeard continued to look at Tsunade. Gambling addicted brat, Whitebeard said, step back. Tsunade, whose heart and mind were trembling from the stimulation of the blood, instinctively obeyed this sentence. And just as Tsunade was tremblingly moving back a few steps in a kneeling position, Whitebeard's right fist was already wrapped in a layer of vibrating white light which scared Kakashi on the side. Kakashi quickly dodged to the side. He just saw Whitebeard lightly smash a fist into the air. In an instant, the ground and the atmosphere were all shaking. Boom! The ground under their feet cracked out huge cracks, a large amount of dust and soil rose up, and the ground stained with crimson blood collapsed under this extremely exaggerated vibration. The whole piece of land became scarred under the impact of the vibration. But indeed, there was no trace of blood this scene, made Tsunade stunned. She watched in horror as the blood disappeared. Looking at the earth that seemed to have been bombed thousands of times with explosive tags, she turned her head in astonishment to look at Whitebeard with a smile. Tsunade-sama, you okay? Shizun, her loyal disciple, asked with genuine concern. Much better. Tsunade supported her body and slowly stood up. She took a deep breath. The smell of blood in the air was also completely dispersed under that vibrating atmosphere. Blood and smell. All gone. Whitebeard-sama, your hidden disease has not been completely cured. Tsunade's breathing was slightly rapid. Obviously, the impact of the blood just now still remained quite a bit. She said to Whitebeard, if Shizun's treatment a few days ago brought you back to 30% of your physical condition, then this surgery that lasted 4 hours has brought your body back to 70%, the remaining 30%. Tsunade hesitated for a moment, but still said it. Shizun is still my disciple, her skill is far from me. For full recovery, I must personally perform the surgery on your injury. There are some hidden mechanisms that involve vital points. I dare not let Shizen do it because one mistake could cost you your life. Yurarara, no problem. Being able to recover to this extent, Whitebeard already felt that his physical condition was excellent. Although his 72-year-old body was already old, but the hidden injuries that always lingered and even affected his hockey and fruit ability had mostly disappeared. Whitebeard felt incredibly good, better than he had ever felt before. If he had been in this state during the Summit War, he wouldn't have had a difficult time when he fought that magma brat. You gambling addicted kid, you're afraid of blood, aren't you? Whitebeard pinpointed Tsunade's weakness with a single sentence. Tsunade was silent for a moment, then nodded in admission. 
Some things happened in the past that made me particularly sensitive to blood. The death of her lover. The death of Nawaki. These events pushed Tsunade's fear of blood to the extreme. Every time she saw blood, she would think of the two people she cared about the most. Studying medicine can save many people, but it can't save the one she cares about the most. This was a huge blow to Tsunade. Unless my hemophobia is cured, there's no way I can completely cure your hidden ailments. Tsunade gave a bitter smile. Nighttime, Whitebeard and the others returned to the secluded small town. The overly tall and burly figure of Whitebeard once again caused a stir. Especially the faint smell of blood emanating from his freshly stitched wound, which added a few points of murderous intent to Whitebeard out of thin air. Inside the small town tavern, Tsunade, Kakashi, and Shizun were dumbfounded as they watched Whitebeard easily drink a vat of strong liquor in one breath. This was not a glass. It was a vat. A large vat. Gururarara. Whitebeard, who had just downed a vat of strong liquor, was in an even better state than after his surgery. He laughed heartily. I didn't expect there to be such good liquor in the ninja world. Ever since I inexplicably ran to that broken Kanoha village, I haven't had a sip of liquor. Ordinary people who drink heavily right after surgery will definitely have big problems. But for someone with an exaggerated physique like Whitebeard, it's not a problem at all. There's no discomfort whatsoever. Whitebeard put down the vat of liquor and looked at Tsunade and Shizum. Gambling addicted kid, Whitebeard continued, Gururara, your medical skills are the only ones I've seen that are on par with Marcos. Are you interested in joining my Whitebeard Pirates? Whitebeard Pirates? Tsunade was taken aback. She had never expected that Whitebeard would invite her to become a pirate. That's right, the Whitebeard Pirates. Whitebeard declared domineeringly. I want to form a new Whitebeard Pirates in this ninja world. Are you trying to establish a force? Tsunade asked with furrowed brows. To be honest, she didn't really like those with too much ambition, especially those whose ambitions had gone astray. Pirate. It doesn't sound like a good person. However, Whitebeard's answer left Tsunade stunned. No. Whitebeard's smile carried a hint of reminiscence as if his sons were right by his side at this moment. The Whitebeard pirates have never been a force. It is a family. Tsunade refused, asking a woman who has lived for three to four decades, a mature-minded person, to acknowledge someone she just met as her father. This is too outrageous. Gururarara. Whitebeard didn't care about Tsunade's refusal. He laughed and said, If you also want to join this family, the Whitebeard pirates always welcome an excellent doctor. By then, you will be my son, my family member, and a part of the Whitebeard pirates. TL slash N. Whitebeard really said son, not daughter Tsunade. Since leaving the Kanoha village, she has wandered in the ninja world for many years. During these years, there were people who wanted to win her over, including other ninja villages, and even some nobles. It was the first time Tsunade saw someone trying to win her over in this way, inviting her to become his son, inviting her to join his big family. Family. Tsunade was a bit dazed. How many years has it been since she heard this word? Does she desire to have a family? Does she desire to have relatives? To be honest, Tsunade does desire it. Her longing for relatives surpasses many people, and her feelings for relatives also surpass many people. Otherwise, she wouldn't have developed an endless fear of blood due to the death of Dan and Nawaki. But after all, she is not a child like Naruto. Tsunade took a deep breath. Lord Whitebeard, I don't even want to be a ninja now, let alone be a pirate. She said so. The key point is that Tsunade is a woman. How can she be a son? Wait, why does she feel that is the important thing? Tsunade was startled. Late at night, Whitebeard and others decided to rest in this small town for one night. After all, Whitebeard had just finished four-hour surgery. Whether it's Whitebeard or Naruto, they both sleep very soundly. Only Kakashi stayed up all night. What Whitebeard said not only stunned Tsunade but also affected Kakashi, who was an orphan of the Kanoha village. Ever since Kakashi's father committed suicide, he has been alone. Even though he didn't take off his mask even when he was sleeping in bed, you could still see from his wide-open dead fish eyes that he couldn't hide his sad expression. He was a bit upset and confused. Honestly, without avoiding his inner feelings, Kakashi admitted that he was a bit envious of Naruto. Naruto is like him. He has no relatives and there are no objects of attachment in this world. Until Naruto met Whitebeard, this little kid had a deep bond with Whitebeard. It turns out, Whitebeard did not disappoint Naruto's trust in him. Whitebeard truly did what a father should do. White-haired brat, be my son. This sentence, even though Whitebeard hasn't said it for several days. But tonight, that sentence echoed again in Kakashi's mind. Over and over again, 
He couldn't forget the look of longing for a family in Whitebeard's eyes when he said, The Whitebeard pirate is a family. Tisk, Kakashi casually grabbed a pillow from the side, and directly covered his face with the pillow. Until the next day, early morning, five o'clock Kakashi, with dark circles under his eyes, yawned sleepily. He hadn't slept all night last night. The reason he got up so early from bed was because it was time for Naruto's self-abuse training at five o'clock in the morning. Gurera Arara, stupid son, run faster for me. Whitebeard's roar made it impossible for people to sleep. Ah, 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 pop, I'm already running very fast. Naruto's screams were also hard to ignore. This pair of father and son, who have no blood relationship, are full of vitality at this time every day. Especially Whitebeard. As if he hadn't had surgery at all yesterday. And as if he hadn't had a hangover. Such enthusiasm. Hmm. Kakashi suddenly noticed something. He turned his head to look to the side and saw Tsunade, who didn't know when she was standing next to him. Tsunade complained speechlessly. With them like this, how can I sleep? It's seriously disturbing other people's sleep. Even if it was very quiet last night, she couldn't sleep. But that doesn't prevent her from complaining. And, Tsunade took in the scene in front of her. Looking at Naruto being tormented into a half-dead state, her eyelids were jumping. What is Whitebeard doing? Is he trying to kill Uzumaki Naruto? This is their training. Kakashi explained. Naruto has been persisting for a long time. After saying this sentence, Kakashi suddenly paused. That's right. In his impression, Naruto has been persisting for almost a month. This kind of training is so intense that it is no different from suicide. If a normal child trains like this, they would probably be dead in less than a day. But Naruto is now screaming miserably, but once he finishes training, he is still full of energy and can continue training the next day. Naruto is a very strong kid. He does it for his dad, and also for his dream of becoming Hokage, Kakashi praised. He puts in 200 times the effort of ordinary people, even if he will die for it, he doesn't care. Tsunade's beautiful eyes flashed with different colors. Naruto wants to become Hokage? Kakashi nodded. This little kid almost shouts every day that he must become Hokage. They are similar. Tsunade murmured. Huh. Kakashi was taken aback. Tsunade did not respond. In her eyes, Naruto and her memory of Nawaki became more and more overlapping, whether it was their appearance or personality. This coincidence, which couldn't be more coincidental, always made Tsunade feel that her younger brother was reincarnated and reborn. But reason told her, that's impossible. Just then, Whitebeard's voice suddenly rang out, Gurarara, you foolish son, do you want some real combat? Only through fighting and getting beaten can one become stronger. Real, real combat? Naruto was a bit shocked. But Pops, I don't know any ninjutsu yet, and I haven't really learned any taijutsu either. Pops, there's no way I can beat you. Although he had been training intensively for almost a month, this month had been all about endurance and strength training. At most, he would try to extract some chakra at night. Basically, it was just these three things, and apart from that, Naruto hadn't learned anything else. Foolish son. Whitebeard gave Naruto a fist of love, causing Naruto almost to let out a scream. Whitebeard chuckled and remarked, When I mentioned real combat, I didn't intend for you to face off against me. We're both pirates after all. When a pirate's money run dry, it's only natural to rob other people. Rob? Naruto held his head, his eyes slightly glowing. Then won't we be able to have a lot of treasures again? Gororara. Of course. Naruto knew about Whitebeard's dream. One of his dreams was to hoard more treasures and then bring them back to his hometown. Since it was Whitebeard's dream, it was also Naruto's dream. Naruto was full of motivation for this. Did I hear that right? Watching the departing figures of Whitebeard and Naruto, Tsunade was dumbfounded. They, they're going to rob? Tsunade-sama, you heard correctly. Kakashi had several black lines on his forehead. They, they really are going to rob. Kakashi remembered something and added. And with Whitebeard's style, it's very likely not limited to robbing. What do you mean? Tsunade asked in astonishment. Kakashi explained. Whitebeard will probably claim that this town is a territory protected by his Whitebeard pirates. From then on, this town will have to pay him tribute every year. Whitebeard once said this is tax, but I think it's more like pirates collecting protection fees. However, Whitebeard usually won't harm civilians. He only targets the rich, especially the nobles. Tsunade. When Tsunade, Kakashi, and Shizun caught up with Whitebeard and Naruto, they found that this father-son duo had already arrived at a casino in town. Tsunade's expression suddenly became quite subtle, because this casino was where she had lost a lot of money, and her high-interest loan was also borrowed from here. 
the group of samurai who were chasing her around town yesterday. They were members of the gang in this casino. You foolish son. Just then, Whitebeard grabbed Naruto's clothes with one hand, under Naruto's wide-eyed expression. He directly threw Naruto into the casino and laughed heartily. Gurarara, this is your first real combat experience. Do not tarnish the reputation of the Whitebeard pirates. Naruto thought, Pops was going to take him along to rob. He didn't expect him to go alone. Waf! Under his scream, Naruto uncontrollably crashed through the casino's glass window and his small body fell into the casino, attracting the attention of all the gamblers. Two minutes ago, inside the casino, apart from a group of fervent gamblers, there were also more than a dozen gangster samurais hired by the casino. Boss, please give us one more chance. We won't disappoint you. We will definitely find that fat sheep. The lead samurai bowed with beads of sweat on his forehead. I already gave you a chance yesterday, said the man referred to as the boss. He was dressed in a suit and wore an exquisite family crest on his lapel. He looked at the group of samurais and said coldly, I spend so much money on all of you every month, not to have you eat for free but to work for me. Boss, we understand our mistake. The samurais didn't dare to protest and avoided making any contradictory remarks. They knew their boss had a powerful background, something they couldn't afford to mess with. Moreover, the exquisite family crest on the boss suit was that of the Shimura clan from Kanoha. He was from the Shimura clan. However, he wasn't a ninja from the Shimura clan. He was one of the few in the family who lacked ninja talent. People like him, who didn't possess ninja abilities, often became the family's tool, sent outside Kanoha to earn money. This casino was operated by the Shimura clan, and they constantly send money back to the family every year. Now, they had lost hundreds of thousands of Ryo. How could he not be anxious? I've already told you, that woman named Tsunade, even though she is a ninja, she won't harm any of you but you can't seem to catch her. Bang. At that moment, a glass window in the casino suddenly shattered, and glass shards flew in all directions. One of the samurais, caught off guard, was struck by a piece of glass in his groin. Ah. The pain made him howl in agony as he fell to the ground, clutching his crotch. His hands were covered in blood, and the pain caused his whole body to tremble. The group of samurais in the casino, as well as some fervent gamblers, couldn't help but turn their eyes towards the broken window. There, they saw a blonde boy lying on the ground, covered in glass shards. When did this boy come out? Why did he crash in? Is he dead? Ah, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. Naruto suddenly bounced to his feet, exclaiming in pain as he hastily removed the glass shards embedded in his body. The pain made him grit his teeth, but he refrained from screaming. Naruto quickly took out a flag from his pocket, and it was none other than the Jolly Roger of the White Beard Pirates. Seeing that the Jolly Roger hadn't been torn by the glass, Naruto breathed a sigh of relief. I can't let Pops down. With this thought in mind, Naruto spread out the pirate flag and, feeling like a true pirate, shouted at the samurais and gamblers, I am Uzumaki Naruto, the first division captain of the new Whitebeard Pirates. The Whitebeard Pirates have arrived in this town, and all of you need to hand over all your treasures. Naruto believed that he had the demeanor of a pirate in his performance. However, the people in the casino didn't seem to take him seriously, damn brat. The samurai, Clutching his bleeding groin, his eyes filled with rage said, I'm going to kill you. Naruto watched the bloody samurai. A sword rushed toward him with the intent of cutting down the small boy in front of him. For a child who had just experienced his first real battle, Naruto didn't expect these adults to waste time talking to him. As the sharp blade approached him, Naruto's small body instinctively moved to the side. Clang! The sword didn't strike Naruto, but instead, it hit the wall behind him. He had dodged it. It seems, slower than when my pops draws his sword. Naruto's eyes widened. For a moment, he realized that he could clearly perceive the trajectory of the opponent's sword swing. Whitebeard's pirate-style training for Naruto. It had an effect. Damn brat, you dare to dodge. The pain and anger had driven the samurai mad. He fiercely swung his sword at Naruto again, but Naruto dodged it by bending his knees and lowering his body. Enough is enough. Naruto was a bit annoyed. You need to know when to stop. He charged at the samurai. A headbutt. It hit the weak spot. Oh! The samurai's sword fell to the ground. He trembled all over, clutching his crotch. A pain unbearable for ordinary people blurred his consciousness. His eyes rolled back. He fainted and fell to the ground. Did I just defeat an adult? Naruto was very surprised. But as soon as he looked up, he met a group of grim-faced samurai and a man in a suit with an even grimmer expression. The legendary big fat sheep dares to run wild on my turf, 
and now a stinky brat shows up as well. Take care of him. Eh? Seeing more than a dozen samurai draw their swords together, Naruto couldn't help but swallow hard. He realized that the situation seemed to be a bit unfavorable for him. So, pops? Stinky brat, even if you call your father, it won't help. A group of samurai sneered and wanted to swarm him. After all, they had just been scolded by their boss. Now, they finally had a chance to perform. How could they miss this opportunity? But at this moment, an even bigger commotion suddenly arose. This time, it wasn't a pane of glass that was shattered. Instead, a wall collapsed. Boom! Inside the casino, the group of samurai and the spectators were dumbfounded as they watched a wall collapse. The sudden rise of dust and debris made them cough continuously. Gururarara! Whitebeard's hearty laughter echoed as his towering figure appeared before the crowd. There are only a dozen enemies, and you're already asking for my help? They all have weapons. Naruto weakly defended. Bang! Whitebeard slammed his Murakuma Jairi into the ground. This strike didn't use any devil fruit powers, yet it caused the ground to shake violently. It also made the people in the casino unstable. They all showed expressions of fear. On their faces, stupid son. Raise the flag of the Whitebeard pirates. After Whitebeard said this to Naruto, he looked at the group of samurai in the casino. Kid, if you draw your swords against pirates, do you know what consequences it will bring? Whitebeard grinned, drawing your swords against my stupid son. Do you know what will happen? His hearty and domineering aura made people tremble gulp. The samurai, who were originally full of vigor, were instantly scared. But before they could react, Whitebeard had already picked up his Murakuma Jairi. After a flurry of blade movements, he slashed down. If you're an enemy of pirates, be prepared to die. Murakuma Jairi fiercely slashed onto the casino floor. The wind pressure rolled up like a tornado, causing the gamblers and samurai in the casino to scream as they were swept up by the strong wind. The casino floor was split in two on the spot. The earth began to crack open on both sides, revealing a straight and wide crack. Murakuma Jairi's blade cut through one end of the crack. The other end spread rapidly forward, all the way to a kilometer away. The casino boss, who was from the Shimura clan, fell hard from midair, almost losing half his life. When he cried out in pain and struggled hastily, he looked up and saw Whitebeard in front of him. He was immediately so scared that he couldn't move. Stupid son, I'm going to teach you the second lesson of being a pirate. If your enemy doesn't want to pay up, beat them until they do. Remember, we are pirates, we are not playing ninja house. Gururarara. Shimura Tokuru was gripped by an unprecedented fear. The giant before him demonstrated unparalleled power, instantly destroying everything that the Shimura clan had built in this place. He watched helplessly as a dozen warriors were sent flying by an overwhelming invisible force. He also saw the same fate befall the gamblers in the casino. A large number of chips were scattered all over the ground. The gambling tables were also destroyed. What's more, he could see a straight, massive trench extending for who knows how many meters. This deep, dark trench was so profound that its end was beyond sight. It was terrifying. It was shocking. Gururarara, stupid son. Whitebeard spoke. Have you learned your lesson? If you have, then move all the money out. This is how pirates deal with those who don't know their place. Okay, okay, pops. Naruto seemed to have opened the door to a new world, and he enthusiastically rummaged through the ruins. No one dared to stop this blonde kid, because the giant was still standing there. After about 10 minutes, Naruto, panting from exhaustion, didn't expect that sometimes moving money could also be a difficult and tiring task. Pops, it's all moved. Naruto shouted excitedly. Then, Naruto had somehow found several large bags. Now, these bags were all filled with banknotes, mostly of high denominations. A rough estimate. It was nearly 10 million Rio. Well done. Quite efficient. Truly worthy of being my son. You were born to be a pirate. Whitebeard rarely praised Naruto. This made Naruto even happier. The brat in a suit who peed his pants. Whitebeard glanced at Shimura Toker. Indeed, this member of the Shimura clan had wet his pant. The area beneath his crotch was undeniably wet. Whitebeard declared in an irrefutable tone, from today onwards, this town is under the protection of the Whitebeard pirates. Your casino must pay taxes to the Whitebeard pirates every year, which means the casino and the Whitebeard pirates will share profits on a 30 to 70 basis. An astonishing figure that left Shimura Tokuru terrified and dumbfounded. Why, why do I only get to keep 70%? It should be noted that the funds he used to bring back to his family accounted for 70% of the casino's annual income. 
If this giant only left him with 70% then, he would have to take this 70% back to his family. What would he have left? Working for nothing? 70% belongs to the Whitebeard Pirates. Whitebeard slammed his Murakuma Jairi into the ground, causing it to tremble violently. He looked disdainfully at Shimura Tokuru, who was staring wide-eyed and tongue-tied and said, You can take 30%, but that depends on my mood. White-haired brat. Whitebeard turned around and said, We've run out of pirate flags. Draw dozens more. I want this town to be filled with the flags of the Whitebeard Pirates. Gururarara. Kakashi. You really have the style of a pirate. Tsunade was surprisingly interested. She crossed her arms over her chest, holding onto two enormous objects. She looked at Kakashi, who was reluctantly drawing pirate flags. I didn't expect that you, with your thick eyebrows and big eyes, would also be his accomplice. After hearing this, Kakashi had no choice but to defend himself. Tsunade-sama, I must stay by Naruto's side and take good care of him. Under these circumstances, I have no choice but to temporarily listen to Whitebeard. You're afraid you can't beat him, aren't you? Tsunade mercilessly exposed Kakashi, leaving Kakashi's only visible eye full of helplessness. Tsunade-sama, as one of the three ninjas, why don't you stop him? Kakashi turned around and asked Tsunade, why should I stop him? After her initial shock, Tsunade actually became gleeful. She even rubbed her hands together. These bastards cheated me out of so much money by cheating. This is their retribution. Moreover, she said, this is an action taken in the land of fire, not a problem with Kanoha. What does it have to do with me? Besides, I have already resigned from my ninja duties. I am no longer a ninja. If her entire speech boiled down to just four words, none of her business. Kakashi didn't know what was going on with Tsunade although she seemed carefree. He could sense a deep melancholy from Tsunade. Could it be because of some events that happened during the war years ago? Kakashi didn't feel it was appropriate to ask too many questions. When Kakashi finally finished drawing dozens of pirate flags, the entire town was adorned with the flags of the Whitebeard Pirate. Flags painted in white on a black background, fluttered in the wind. After hanging the flags of the Whitebeard Pirates all over the town, Whitebeard was ready to leave with Naruto. After all, Whitebeard's purpose in coming here was to find Tsunade to treat his illness and alleviate the hidden pain in his body. Although it wasn't completely cured, Whitebeard felt it was enough. After a surgery treatment lasting more than four hours by Tsunade and Shizun, Whitebeard's physical condition was incredibly good. Even if he had to fight a marine admiral for ten days and nights, Whitebeard felt there would be no problem. Most of the hidden illnesses had been eliminated. They would no longer hold him back. He was truly nearing his peak strength with his aging body. Pops, this doesn't seem like the way back? When Naruto said this, he was gritting his teeth due to exertion. Although some of the banknotes were sealed directly by Kakashi using his sealing scroll at Whitebeard's request, Naruto still had to carry a considerable amount of banknotes on his back. This was also a form of special training exercise. The weight of the banknotes Naruto carried had reached 200 pounds, so heavy that his five-year-old legs were trembling. Even his lips were stunned. But he still followed Whitebeard with a trembling step. Whitebeard laughed and said, Foolish son, this journey is not only for my treatment, but also a form of training for you. Do you want to go back to school and be the weakest among them? Do you want to be fall behind that Uchiha kid? Uchiha. Uchiha Sasuke? Naruto was taken aback. Whitebeard's words truly struck a chord in Naruto's heart. Naruto didn't know why he had such a competitive spirit. His instinct didn't want him to be surpassed by Sasuke. Pops, so we. Naruto couldn't help but ask weakly, where are we going? Leave the land of fire. Whitebeard declared without mincing words. Only by experiencing the baptism of blood and battle in such a war-torn country can you grow up. Hold on. Leave the land of fire? Kakashi, who was behind them, widened his eyes. He knew he was no match for Whitebeard, but in such an urgent situation, he had to speak up. How can this be? If Naruto leaves the land of fire, he could very well become a target for all the major ninja villages. He is the Nine Tails Jinchuriki. At this point, Kakashi suddenly realized. Oh no. It appeared that he had accidentally revealed some important information. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much. And it keeps me going. Plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.